We're gonna take a look at the two MVPs of these two teams. Obviously, the regular season MVP, Yona, who's also making a great case for being the playoffs MVP so far. 7 and 0, not a bad start. Maru obviously having a great year as well. I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to a clash between those two goats. But we're not going to kick things off with that. We're going to kick things off with a PVT between Trigger, our man from Canada, who's had a couple of great PVTs over the last 12 months. He's smiling. He's feeling it. It's our boy. Definitely one of the biggest games that he has played so far. As he goes up against this man, it's 70 against 70, according to the WTL power ranking. Both players very evenly matched. But the young... I don't know if he was expecting one of the Zergies, and if that's why they sent him out first. We were expecting Ryong. We can safely say that. I cannot believe, by the way, that Feyenoord is not winning. What a disappointing start to the season. I was thinking of buying a jersey, and because of this, I'm not buying a jersey. You think Ryong is a little favorite here? I don't know what you guys ended up voting for, by the way. We had a 30 plus minute prediction. In the end, I don't know what you guys voted for. This thing went on forever and ever and ever and ever. I apologize that it took so long. But it is what it is. I do believe it is time for some video games. Look at that boy on the left. Making his debut in the WTO Code S playoffs. And not in the early rounds, but in the grand finals immediately. I think recent shape favors Trigger. Experience obviously favors Ryong. I think all three options are possible here, but I I have a lot of confidence in Trigger his PVT. And that's not Basilisk bias, I just think our boy is awesome. Basilisk versus Alright guys. Game one. Give so me those predictions right now. What is it going to be? Who is going to crown themselves champion of WTL Code S? Hit me up! You don't have to do exact scores because that is very difficult. Just tell me right now who you think is going to take it. You guys believe in on-site or do you guys believe in us? Let's go. Home crowd stand up for this man in the top left side of Gresban. We are looking at the main base of our young Canadian Protoss. It is Basilisk a Trigger. In the bottom right side we are looking at the main base of a Korean Terran veteran representing on-site gaming. It's Ryung. If it would ever go to an ace match today, there is a 0% a chance it will be Crank against Roddy. Like that will never happen. A, I would never accept it today because I'm obviously like, I'm not in any good state to play StarCraft. If you have like a 36 hour day with like a tiny bit of sleep here and there in very uncomfortable places, you don't want to play StarCraft. And B, the only reason we did it last time is because last time it didn't really matter. Other than the undefeated season and the bragging rights, but... Last time it was for fun. Today it's literally for the championship. So if it would go to an ace match, it will never be Crank versus Roddy. Amaro versus Roddy, that's obviously possible. But I don't think he wants that smoke. Excited for this one though, guys. What a moment for Trigger. Obviously joined a brand new orc entering Starcraft 2 a little less than a year ago. And look at him now. Not only is he one of the best Protoss players on this planet, I really believe that. Some people will think I get carried away when I say that, but like if you say he's one of the best Protoss on the planet, I don't mean like the second or third best Protoss, but I think in the top 10, he absolutely belongs there. And he's had a couple of great performances already, and I think he will make us proud here. This could be a 1-1, it can also be a 2-0. I don't believe in Ryong 2 0 our boy. Mm -mm. Not after the Zeitland buff. Some of you guys obviously don't watch StarCraft all the time, so you may not be ultra familiar with Trigger. He's just kind of been on the up and up for a solid 12 to 18 months at this point. Had a couple runs in WCS America, ESL America, DreamHack America, however you want to call it. Uh, offline didn't have too much success yet, other than regional. Online, actually done pretty good. Made it to the finals a couple times of uh, the American Weekly. Has taken out guys like Clem, Max Pax, uh, Beyond when it matters in tournaments when he was at my house for I don't know 10 days leading up to home story cup he got up to 6700 MMR on the ladder so I think all of that means 
But the boy is pretty damn good. If you guys have any other questions, obviously feel free. He also does stream a lot. You guys are always allowed to promote other streamers, especially my boys. So we're gonna have an adapt to shade to the other side of the map. This is where Trigger obviously needs to be a little bit careful. He knew about the double gas opening. So then every single unit counts as a Protoss here in the early game. He cancels this shade. I don't really understand that. He wants to get one more shot off on the heli and does not get it. I think it would have made more sense to let that shade finish up and save our adept. But it's okay. First blood goes in favor of the Korean veteran. The Trigger will obviously have a slightly better economy because his expand was earlier. And we know Trigger as a man who loves his Blink Stalker openings. I don't know if that's nerfs. I don't know if Trigger is too nervous about this. He's actually kind of cool. And in a way, he's pretty confident in his own ability, especially the PVTs. Like, I think he feels quite good. This was the same map that he played versus Maru in the regular season of WTL Codas, and that honestly was one hell of a game. Of course, he should have won it. He was in a position to win it, but he did play amazing. And to make it that close and make Maru work that hard for it, that's a victory in and by itself. Fire North has ended 0 0. Unbelievable. I'm done with football. StarCraft only for the upcoming 12 months, guys. Passion is gone. What a terrible way to start the season. I'm gonna have a triple mind drop heading towards the main base. This is obviously where it's very important for Trigger to have his units in the correct location. He's got some stalkers there. The young is still gonna go for it. We have a few uh, Reapers and one Heli and make it into the natural. The Pro Pool is a tiny bit late. And that is a lot of damage to kick things off. Jeez Louise, the probe's not mining yet either in the natural. But that went about as good as it could have gone for Ryung. Oh my goodness, and even the Medivac is alive. Yeah, that's very bad. I see some GG's in the chat. Like, if Trigger was a big underdog, if this is versus a Clam or a Maru, I'm gonna be like, yeah, I, I do think that's GG. I don't think you recover from that. I think Ryong is very good, but he's not quite that level, so... Maybe we are still allowed to dream. But it's, it's bad. I'm not going to lie. That is kind of rough. And, it, like, this also goes back a little bit to losing that first Adept. Because if you have that first Adept still alive, you can send one more Stalker into the main base. And then Adept is very good in, Reaper, in dealing with Reapers and Hellions, especially defensively. I think then he could have focused a bit more on the Widowmind drop. Jeremy tells me to believe in the power of Protoss. We do. But uh, above all, I believe in the power of Trigger. I've seen the man have a couple bad starts. He was in a lot of trouble against Beyond on Dragon Skills. And he survived, and he survived, and he survived, and he turned it around. And I think almost all of you guys would say that Beyond is a better TVP player than Ryong is. So. We can do it back then. There's no reason to assume we can do it now. Uh, hello, Kevin. If you, are you the German Warcraft 3, Kevin? So the first number... Like, oh, as we have another Widow Mind drop, and he's not pulling the workers again, so we're about to lose five more. At least the two Widow Mines get picked up, but that is painful. So the yellow number is the worker count, the orange number is the army supply. So the first uh, over here in the bottom side, obviously blue is minerals, green is gas. The yellow is the worker count, orange is army supply. This is definitely a rough start for Trigger so far, but he's still cranking out as many probes as he can. He's at 50 at the moment. It is somewhat playable. It's just painful. It is, however, safe to say that if Trigger can somehow win this game, then game two is a wrap, baby. Ryong is setting up a flank. He has floated out two medevacs. He's going to try to sandwich these stalkers. This is where it's so important for Trigger that he evacuates in the right direction. Oh, no, 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 no. Ryong is coming in from the left and he knows about the blink and everything is going well for Ryong so far here in game one. The only tiny, tiny, tiny silver lining here besides one stalker living is that Ryong obviously spent a decent amount of time setting all of that up and then chasing those stalkers towards the bottom. Yeah. I cannot really spin this in a way that I say it was good for Trigger. Our man from Canada is in trouble. Moves out a tiny bit with the army. He was expecting and maybe Ryong to push through the center. Instead, Ryong is going to come through the bottom. That Robo feels like a very juicy target. Widowmind spacing is good. This is going to be a very difficult hold for Trigger, but the man is going to try. We have the Raven with a lot of energy. 
Okay, that's a decent amount of friendly fire, by the way. Not a bad start to the fight there for Trigger, guys. Widow Mine's actually softening up a lot of these bio units. War Prism comes out as well. The Trigger does not have a Forge or a Templar Archives, and he barely has a Worker lead. So, if anything, I almost feel that maybe it'd be okay for Ryong to go home. But instead, he has rallied more units to the other side of the map, and that's a fine play as well. The Colossus are near Shield Battery. We could overcharge there. We're gonna have an interference matrix landing on the War Prism and the Colossus at the same time. So it's only Zealots and Stalkers at this point for Trigger. And that's just not very good. The army is a little bit overstimmed. Zealots coming in from the bottom, getting on top of the tanks. Two Colossus still alive, guys. It is a hold. It honestly is starting to look like a hold. We need to micro, make sure we don't lose too many Stalkers and definitely don't lose a Colossus. So lost the Robo, lost a bunch of basic units. But Trigger is allowed to dream. Not bad, and especially if it, considering how this game has started off, the first 6-7 minutes. I think we can live with that defense. Is Trigger winning the game? No, he's definitely not winning the game. But he's, he's still in it. Got two forges coming online, he's got a 10 worker lead at this point, which is really not all that uh, bad. We still have that war prism alive as well. Okay, I shouldn't have said that. Because now we have Vikings that are going to try to get on top of this war prism. But things do get a little gnarly. I mean, this is buying time. When it comes to the Zealots and the SUVs, that's kind of an even trade. Obviously, losing that prism right after we lost our Robo, we only have one Robo, is a little bit painful. So perhaps it would have been better to wait with that war prism until Ryong would move out again. But I understand that Trigger maybe felt that he just wanted to make something happen. And also get an idea of what kind of units Ryong is producing. I'm not sure if he saw the Ghost Academy. Yeah, the, the economy is, is quite alright. Obviously Ryong does have a pretty big upgrade advantage. The armory is a little bit late on the side of Ryong. But I guess that's okay if you go for Ghosts and Vikings at the same time. The Zealots are going to run into this mineral line too. Ryong has a bunch of forces in the top center of the map. He's going to try to get a cancel on the fourth base of Trigger. Viking count is not really overwhelming. It's obviously high enough to deal with the Colossus, but like if Ryong takes a bad engagement near batteries, and especially near battery overcharge, then I do believe that Trigger can keep the Colossus alive, and then he should be okay. But this is obviously not going to be easy. It's a bunch of ghosts as well. The Raven has a lot of energy forward blink. Sure, the anti-army missile goes down, but do you really want to fight near battery overcharge? But Ryong says, yes, Roddy, I do. And there is no battery overcharge yet. I guess we have no energy. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe it. We have four Nexi. And we somehow did not have energy for a battery overcharge. I really do think that's a slightly different fight. The anti army missile was big in the end. And GG gets called. Trigger unfortunately drops game one against Ryong. And we lose our first map in the WTL Codas playoffs. Good start by Ryong. Obviously the first win of my drop was a big success. Round two wasn't too shabby either. It's all good. It's only game one, guys. Grand finals is a marathon, not a sprint. Nice for Ryong. Sad for our boy. But our boy will fight in game two. Now, obviously, uh, Trigger will have the map choice. And the army is one of the most underestimated spells in the game. Can definitely have a big impact. And at this moment, it had a big impact, but uh, if only there was some energy for a battery overcharge. Because we did see that Trigger was microing the Colossus a little bit. He was pulling them back. There was one Immortal that was dropping a little bit. Couldn't quite participate in the fight immediately. Uh, with battery overcharge, maybe that fight goes a bit different. Oh, the sword was obviously not good enough, and Trigger will know that. You cannot lose that many probes against the first Widowmine Harass. It was well executed by Ryong, obviously distracting a little bit with the two Hellions and the Reaper in the natural. And even if those didn't kill a lot, to see like 18 probes not mine for like 10 seconds, that actually hurts about as much as losing 9 freaking probes. Hello, hello, Neo. How are you doing, Legend? So I've heard about uh, the confirmation of uh, Rara Land and the location. 
If I'm if I'm free that weekend, mate, I'll stop by. That's a promise. Then maybe I can do a best of one show match against Rimo. I'll play him on Lost Temple. <laughs> Early on, Ryong said he may be equals to triggering the interview. Yeah, well, I mean, I think a lot of us thought it was going to be close. I kind of believed in the 2-0. Obviously, I cannot always be right. Let's see if it will go 1-1 between these two. The way that the playoffs work for everybody that has just joined us for these grand finals is that you have three players that have three lives, then you have a revive as well. So... The quickest possible way for all of this to end would be a 7-0. But if uh, Ryong 7-0's Basilisk here today, I'm flying over to Korea and I'm immediately flying him to Macau. And we're going to gamble all night long because then he clearly is on something special. Let's see what Game 2 of the Grand Finals will bring in the top right side. Our Canadian Protoss representing Basilisk is Trigger. In the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base. Of our Korean Terran. It is on site gaming's uh, Ryong. Alright, come on, Yun. You can do it, amigo. It's a shame. Obviously, a frustrating way to start your journey. He did not get to play in the previous Clan War. I know he's been looking forward to the WTL Kodas playoffs. And uh, Ryong is definitely a beatable opponent for Trigger. It's not easy, we even saw Ryong go 1-1 with Raynor in the regular season of WTL Code S. Which goes to show that obviously Ryong is still very good, especially at certain parts of the game. But that was Neo Humanity, TVZ. It's very different than a little PVT that Trigger obviously has a lot of experience in. Hello, hello Ravi, thank you so much mate for the 98 months. Ravi almost at the big 1-0-0. I like spamming the moon to help Yoon. Let's go. I wonder what the, what was I talking about? I need to remember what it started. With. It's okay. We'll discuss it together. Thank you, Lavra. Let's hope we can make it a happy Sunday. It's been an exhausting Sunday, but hopefully it will be a happy one. Tiny bit of a false start here to the Grand Finals, but definitely no reason to picnic, and I'm not giving up. These two guys both had a 70 power ranking, according to the WTL admins, staff, casters. I think, honestly, they both deserve a tiny bit higher, but we all know they are very harsh on their power rankings. So the fact that they are dead even, I can live with. I think Ryong is still one step ahead of Trigger, especially with the current patch and Maple. Hmm. I mean, everybody is allowed to have their opinion. I don't really agree with that. I think Trigger has been able to defeat a couple of very good players in various online tournaments, and I just don't see Ryong beating those. Start here in game two is definitely a little bit better. Great save on the probe. Reaper takes a couple shots from the Stalker. It will not fall. Let's hope that Trigger doesn't do something silly with his first adept. Because we saw in the previous game how important it can be to just have one extra unit. Early game, a lot of Protoss players have a lot, or a lot of Protoss units have a lot of HP. So you simply don't have too many. That means that your firepower and DPS is a little bit low. So if you then have to deal with multi prong aggression very early on when the unit count is like 4 or 5, a single adept suddenly becomes very important. I think that was a tiny mistake. Supply block is lasting for a while. At least for a, a split second there. That was a good save on the, the probe early on. That should give Trigger some confidence and momentum. Once more a blink set up here with a Robo. I expect Trigger to just play a macro oriented game. I don't think he really needs to be overly aggressive on two bases with four gate blink stalker. He's good in it. But I just don't think he has to. He picked Royal Blood because I'm sure he's confident on this map to play a slightly longer game as well. And obviously he knows where it went wrong in the previous game. Just need to clean up the beginning. Ryong has a setup that looks somewhat similar, but it's still obviously a bit different. Last game we had a triple Widow Mind Drop opening. This time around it's a double Widow Mind Drop opening. And the Hellion and two Reapers. 
are part of this move out as well. Blink, 70-ish percent done. So it's going to take a little while. Trigger sees the Medivac come in, sees the first Widowmine hop out, sees the second Widowmine hop out. And then the Reapers and the Hellions get out too. Stark is trying to get as many shots up as possible. One of the Widowmines is still not fired. Fires at the Adept in the end. It's not perfect defense, but I do think it's alright. Obviously compared to the last game, it's a night and day difference. <coughs> a little bit of lost mining time, but it's very acceptable. The Widow Mines got taken care of. That medevac is not very scary anymore. We don't have to worry about pulling probes out of two mineral lines. It was only a single mineral line that we lost some mining time. And on top of that, Trigger obviously has a pretty quick three base setup. So, so far, so good for the young men from Canada. Let's hope we keep it up. Please talk us on the other side of the map. We'll pick up a single SCV. At this point for Trigger, it's obviously just important to get a good feel of what the follow-up of Ryong is going to be. How aggressive does Ryong want to play it? What does uh, Trigger need to worry about? Taking a look at the mini-map, I see that the Medivac is evacuating from the main base. Raven shows up at the third right now. Observer, auto turret goes down. Want to take a look? He does want to take a look. This would be a, a great catch. Picking up a medevac is honestly awesome. Ryong does find a tiny opening here in the main base. And two Reapers and a Hellions have potential. Now this is actually dealing a lot more damage than it's ever supposed to. Unfortunately, he's still not going to get the medevac. That was very good for Ryong, guys. A minor investment. But getting a bunch of probes and lost mining time. And the medevac still alive. The Reapers and the Hellions still alive. Still, it's a much better start for Trigger overall. But I don't think he was very happy with that. This is that, That's not really something that's still supposed to find a lot of value, like six and a half minutes into the game. Two full medevacs load up. Trigger obviously needs to be very careful, as Booyah points out as well. It's double Raven on the side of Ryong. So it's very hard to get great observer scouting if the Terran is opening up double Raven. I think Trigger picked up on it, and that's why he has been so cautious. This can get a little bit gnarly. There is still nothing in the main base that can easily deal with this. And yeah, you may not want to show all that much respect to... Okay, Trigger gets on top of this double drop in the top left side. Okay, and Ryong did not anticipate that move. One of the Ravens is going to get picked off. A couple of Marines and Marauders go down. That was fantastic. I was a bit worried about this showing up first, finding damage, and then Trigger maybe struggling in the top left. But Trigger was one step ahead of Ryong. And he crashed that party before it really got going. It's a, it's a very clean game too. Well, maybe not very clean, but it's a very solid game too. Where at least the big picture things are going perfectly fine for Trigger. Wouldn't hate some upgrades. Maybe. Cheeky Forge. Bam. I ask and I receive. 63 probes is obviously solid. The army right now of Trigger just feels a lot better than the army of Ryan. I wouldn't even hate Trigger going for like a, a tiny poke and see if he can get on top of those tanks. Yeah, I think we could all live with a 1-1. One, one. I personally would have loved to see Trigger go 2-0. Not just because that's great for Basilisk, but that's obviously nice for Trigger, right? And gives him a, a good feeling about these Grand Finals. And then maybe he can wear down the next guys a little bit, or even steal a map. We saw how close he was to defeating Maru on Gresvon earlier this year. Solar, I think, has been a very difficult opponent for Trigger. But his PvT can legitimately be very scary. Well, that is not happening. Let's just hope it's at least going to be a 1-1. This game is far from over. It's not a walk in the park for Trigger by any means, but I think he's quite happy with how it's going so far. Second Robo and two Nexi and Double Fort. So this man is really embracing his inner macro animal. Like, obviously, it, it does not take a rocket scientist to figure out that if this goes 1-1, there is a good chance this is the last we'll see of Trigger. We can revive one player, we'll have an ace match. 
And of course with Rainer and Saro. I think we kind of all know where that goes. Is the probes will surround the Reaper. I gotta say that tiny drop throughout the entire game has actually done a lot of good stuff for Rion. Multiple times all of these probes were not mining. Four or five probes at a time. Uh, kudos to Ryong for getting a lot of value out of that drop. Hopefully it does not uh, fluster our boy too much. And he just keeps his eye on the prize. Wait for those upgrades to finish up. We've got a second Robo. We have 75 probes. We have a whole bunch of bases. What about a third Robo? And a fourth Robo? And a fifth Robo? <laughs> I don't mind going full classic here, guys. I don't have a problem with that. Trigger needs to be a tiny bit careful because I don't really see a war prison with this army or a pylon or a gateway. There are a couple zealots trying to run into the third. I think it will be hard for Trigger to find a lot of success against three base Ryong. But I think once Ryong tries to take the fourth, that has to be the goal moment for Trigger, right? That's where we go. Pedal to the metal. We full send it. And we make life a living nightmare for Mr. Ryong. As a couple zealots find a tank. Mostly because of the tanks of Ryong, but we'll take that. At this point, Trigger can donate Zealots for days. And if he can take out some expensive gas units on the side of Ryong, solid trades. Nothing wrong with that. An EMP whiffs. First EMP I saw whiff since Cuckoo missed an EMP on an Observer in surveillance mode. I still think about it every now and then. And I wonder how Cuckoo did it. Zealots are going to try to get on top of the bunker and the tank at the third. Pulling a few of the units away. Trigger feels that this is his moment to maybe get on top of some of these tanks and deny Ryong from going up to four bases. And I'm okay with all of this. I just kind of wish that then when you have a pylon or a gateway in the center of the map or you have a war prism somewhere, right? If it's just main army between the natural and the fourth base and Zealots running into a pretty well defended third, I think we're kind of missing that. Oh, ultimate KO power there. He's gonna try to land a big Nova. There is a low HP tank. Few of the Novas fly forward. Tank does fall. Doesn't look like a bad fight so far. Stalk is gunning down a couple of these Vikings too. You love to see that. Colossus very low in HP though. One more Nova stands forward. Trigger needs to be a little bit careful because now the entire army of Ryong is here. And Trigger's army is very low in HP. Trigger, 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 mate. We're gonna lose a lot of Robo units here. Oh, oh, oh. Again, this is so hard for a Terran to do. Wow, great splits, by the way, there by Ryong. Gotta give credit where credit is due. But Ryong played that very well. Finally, we have a couple of these Zealots showing up. But Trigger has lost so many expensive units. And I think he's gonna lose, at the very bare minimum, one base here. Even though it's painful for Ryong to just keep on stimming. But that is a big Terran army. That was a wonderful fight by Ryong. It was a terrible fight for our boy. If he just had a war prison with that army, I really don't think that Ryong can ever do that. You're not really supposed to be able to keep on chasing like that. I do think that Trigger has the money to stay in this game. I wouldn't hate it if he cancels this Nexus. Maybe uh, it feels like he can save it. Observer, please show the armies. Observer! Okay. Trigger was kind of close there. Oh, Ryong picks up. A lot of supply in these Medivacs. Splits it off to the right side. Guys, look at the minimap. There are five or six Medivacs full of units ready to dive into the main base of Trigger. Trigger does have a few DTs. Nice scan by uh, Ryong. <laughs> he is paying attention to all the right things. Trigger catches a couple of the Marines and Marauders. It seems that this bunker has finally fallen. The big drop is happening in the main base, by the way. Ryong is about to show up in the main base of Trigger with four or five Medivacs full of units. And you cannot deal with this with just a couple Zealots. Whether you like it or not, you may have to recall here. But Trigger says, I don't want to recall. I want to fight on the other side of the map. Lens decent Novas, but it's not good enough. Losing the main, he's going to lose a lot of very important infrastructure too. We have DTs and Novas trying to clean it up. But Trigger needs way more army, I think, to deal with that. That was a big old drop. Now one of the disruptors gets stacked as well. This is where the forges are too. A single pylon is powering the two forges and four gateways. And if those go down as... Wow, Ryong again with some crazy good splits at the absolute last second. Starting to look like this will be a 2-0 on the side of on-site gaming. Oh, Trigger. 
I honestly felt this game was going quite well. These disrupt is getting tagged. EMP, we're just kind of running out of steam. That monstrous bank is no more. Trigger still has decent income, has the bases in the top left side, but that one RT Mactosis pylon is going to get picked off, and that means no 3 3 upgrades for you on powered gateways. And I think that facial expression there kind of says it all. That's a tiny heartbreak. GG gets called. Ryong with the big fist pump and the clap for himself takes the 2 0 victory over Trigger. It is what it is. That is a, that's a rough start for the grand finals. That's a shame for our boy. I think that could have gone different, but congrats to Ryong. He played very well, especially I think in that second game, because he didn't really have a fantastic start. I think Trigger made a big mistake with his main army. He got a bit over eager. He had a lot of investments going in Nexi, extra gateways. Um, the robot, the double forge was spinning. To then put your main army in such a potential vulnerable spot, Clearly, he did not expect that army to ever steam forward again on top of all the robot units, but it did, so. That means that Ryong takes it 2 0. He micros very well. Kudos to Ryong. It's a good start for onside, but it's okay. A little adversity has never killed anyone. We've been behind a couple times throughout the season. I want to make sure I have the right score. I'm very paranoid about misclicking, guys. My head is spinning a little because I've, s I've had such a long day and I barely had any sleep, so tiny bit worried. Let me go ahead and discuss with the boys. Yeah. So what is important to keep in mind, guys, is that obviously these are best of twos, but the first map is set. There is uh, nothing you can do about that. So this is our grand final. The next best of two starts on Babylon. And as... Uh, Booyah points out in the chat if you go 2 0 on Babylon, that means that the next best of two, if you stay on, so whether it's Sarah or Rainer, right, who goes next, you will have to play on Neo Humanity map one. Why haven't they? I mean, with they, you mean us. Simply use Sarah, and if he all kills, that's it. Why use lower rank players? Well, I mean. <laughs> That's not really how it goes, but we just discuss as a team what we think is the best strategy and what we believe is going to give us the best chances to win. And we, as a team, decided to send Trigger because we believe in him. Just because things don't work out, that doesn't necessarily mean it was the wrong idea. And also, it's nice for Sarah after he plays seven, import, uh, seven high stress imported matches in a row that he has a little bit of a break, that he can have dinner and he can just digest his food. So, that is why. All right, guys, tiny break. After that, we'll be back. I can let you guys know that we have sent a Raynor out. Raynor is going to be the second player for Basilisk here in the grand finals of the WTL code. That's Raynor versus Ryong. Rematch of the regular season. In the regular season, they went a one and one. What? What? 88? Wait. So he went from 92 to 88 after completely destroying game as 8? They saw him absolutely destroy game as 8 and they were like, yeah, let's give him minus 3 or minus 4. Alright, I already didn't take it serious, but now I really don't take it serious anymore. <laughs> really? He got punished for winning game as 8? Sure. Alright. <laughs> I think that is a fresh stream, yeah. That, lo that looks like a rainbow with a hand Versus Onside Gaming. Game 2. How she catch up. I have to make myself a coffee, guys. My day has been incredibly long. Let's do it. Round two of the WTL Codas Grand Finals. Babylon is going to be our battleground. Top left side. We're looking at the main base of the man who just got a 2-0 over Trigger. That is on-site gaming's Rainer. 
bottom right side. You're looking at the main base of the man who just took down Gamers 8 a little over a week ago. Actually, exactly a week ago, right? Jeez, this was a crazy long week in a weird way. Exactly one week ago, the man crowned himself Champions of Gamers 8 and became $150,000 richer. That is before tax, of course, but still. And if I said onsets rain, I obviously mean best this rain. Sorry, guys. I went to the Muslim wedding yesterday. I traveled all night. It's been... My head is a bit spinning. It was an entire journey to even make it today. I'm happy that I'm here. I'm excited. Obviously, Basilisk Rainer. Our boy will bring it home. Let's see. 21-year-old Rainer has not really done a whole lot of losing yet. He turned 21 at the weekend of Home Story Cup 23, I think it was, right? That was a little over a month ago. He won that tournament. Went home. Looked good online. Went to Saudi. Won game as 8. So far, Rainer turning 21. It's been pretty good to him. And I think if it wasn't for the WTL uh, Grand Finals this weekend, I think Rainer would have probably been in Sweden as well for the wedding. But obviously, like me as a caster and a team captain, like it's okay if I'm a little bit tired, right? We can live with that. Obviously, the players need to be in peak condition, so we couldn't really send Rainer to Sweden. And then he'd be exhausted today. That would be an issue. Uh, we definitely had a very good time in Sweden. It was a lot of fun. All very happy. Just good vibes, happiness all around. You are the ace. We can meme about me being the ace all we want. I don't think the boys really need the old man today, guys. There's only one thing that the boys need to do for the old man today, and that's make him a champion. For the first time in 13 years in StarCraft 2. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm the old retired pro athlete that's way over the hill. And got recruited to a championship team to be like the backup of the backup of a backup. It's like I'm winning a ring, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I'm 44, but I finally won my first Super Bowl. <laughs> Uh, losing the drone is obviously not a very sweet start. But it's okay. We have a couple of links running to the other side of the map. Will that Reaper ever fall? That Reaper should fall now. Hopefully Rainer does not lose another drone and he won't. What did the links accomplish on the other side of the map? Nothing yet. But they do delay a few SUVs from being built. So. Tiny minor victory there. Ryong overall so far off to a good start. And just playing good. Like the 2-0 against Trigger. I know some of you guys are still sleeping a little bit on Trigger. And maybe some of you guys will think that I'm just biased towards Trigger. But Trigger really is very good. And if you look at his Aliga lag and you look at the guys he has been able to defeat over the last few months. It's an impressive win by Rion. It was definitely not a given. <laughs> Got the SCV back. Rainer drops the Roach one, guys. I had obviously a decent amount of success with the roaches over in Saudi. As he sends an overlord in, Rainer obviously wants to make sure that he knows what he's going up against. If you just scout this as a Zerg, it can always be a little bit annoying, right? Because Terrans, they like to start up Cloak even when they don't go for Banshees at all. Of course, right now Rainer knows there's a good chance it will be Cloak Banshees. But you can't just be 100% certain about it because Terrans, they like to fool you. And since StarCraft 2 is a game of incomplete information, they like to give you the wrong idea. I am biased, obviously, in WTL, but I am not biased in the things that I say. Like, when it comes to, like, player ratings or their strengths or weaknesses or what I expect. Like, I'm biased as in, like, okay, I'm cheering for our boys. But I'm really not biased in when I say I think person X can do X, Y, or Z. In that way, I like to stay as accurate as possible. And obviously, I'm going to be wrong once in a while, guys. It'd be very freaky and boring if I was never wrong. I thought Trigger was going to get at least a 1-1, maybe a 2-0. I was wrong. It happens. But that was not biased because I would make that same prediction again. If they play another best of two right now, I'd still predict the same thing. <laughs> Ryong has banked up two Banshees with Cloak. The Hellion count is quite high as well. 
So obviously Raynan needs to make damn sure that his units are in the correct uh, location. One happy little Zergling running into the third. That's actually not bad because that mule was just dropped. So losing a bit of mining time of the mule is very annoying. Banshee's taking a lot of damage from the Queen Sin and it goes down. Steph Curry, the Banshee baby. Oh, you've never looked that good, Steph. Oh, sick. Obviously, that's a pretty big mistake on the side of Ryong, but good job by Reyna to capitalize on that immediately. And that means that this opening is all of a sudden not that scary anymore. Kobe. Oh, poor Kobe. The Baning has going down, Rainer working on his 1 1 upgrades and enjoying a 14 worker lead. Which obviously is quite sexy. Queen range patch to 11. Hidden bug to help Basilisk, Kappa. No. Don't even joke about it. Some people will take it serious. Does really feel that Rainer is cruising here, guys, in game one. Just kind of feels that he can do whatever the hell he wants to do. He's not really under a whole lot of pressure. We know that Ryong is pretty comfortable in playing very late game, but obviously you don't want to enter the late game while being far behind. And on a map like Neo Humanity, you can just take it very slow. I don't think you can quite have the same approach on Babylon. Obviously, if Rainer wins game one, uh, Ryong cannot pick Neo Humanity because we vetoed Neo Humanity. Every team has one map veto. I think they vetoed Altitude. Uh, we vetoed Neo Humanity. What's the format? How do we decide who's playing? Captain Roddy decides. The teams decide. The only thing we have to do is send the first player in blind and after that you just decide who you want to send out. If a player goes 2-0, they stay on. If it goes 1-1, one, one, two, two teams send in two players. And obviously, when you send in the player, you don't know who the other team is sending in. Hmm. Ryong is going to test Reyna's late game for Maru. I think because of the opening, that just did not work out, right? The Hellions didn't get anything done. The Banshees didn't get anything done. I don't really think that Ryong has a whole lot of choices here. He is cranking out a lot of units as we speak. We've got the 2-2 upgrades, tanks, 4 Marauders at a time and 8 Marines. So, all 8 Rexes are definitely doing their thing. I don't know. Maybe Ryong just wants to stay on 8 Rex, 3 base and full send it. But this kind of feels the start has not really been good enough for that. But that may very well be Ryong's best chance. Like, he did defeat Raynor in a very late game scenario on Neo Humanity in the regular season. But Neo Humanity and Babylon play out very different. Baby Marine says he thinks Ryong is all inning. Well, it's kind of looking like that at this point. Because he's not building any extra SCVs. He's not dropping a second factory or anything else. Definitely no fourth CC yet. So it does kind of feel that Ryong wants to get the job done with one good big old push. 2-2, two, two, 8 racks, bunch of tanks. What is important for Raynor is that the first fight is somewhat decent. This is definitely a little bit scary, I'm not going to lie guys. Because Raynor has a lot more drones, which obviously means that his army is going to be a little bit smaller. Raynor is the king of engagements though. We saw a couple of picture perfect surround strut gamers 8. Right now he's got a lot of extra banelings morphing. Taking a look at the minimap, where are these units? Right now it's just a Rav just trying to take out one tank. Ryong split off a few marines there and actually got a cancel. Adreno glance not quite done yet. Reyna seems comfortable with giving up on this base for now. Obviously knows that Ryong is pretty committed and needs to get a lot done. There are 3-3 three, three upgrades on the way. Ryong still maxed out at 132 army supply. Reyna his Vipers. Oh no, Reyna loses a Viper, guys, before a single blinding cloud of parasitic bomb goes off. These bailing connections are not bad at all. Pretty decent. Losing that Viper, that was kind of painful. As Rain is splitting off a lot of roaches to just pick up some reinforcements in the center of the map. I don't hate that. Blinding Cloud goes down. Decent split there by Ryong, but I think that Rain is doing an alrighty job at this point. As long as these units stay away from the mineral lines, I think I like what I see because we've got three Ultras on the production tab. And once these Ultras are out, obviously Ryong is going to struggle a little bit. 
final tank falls and all that's left is a bunch of medevacs and marines. Raider obviously did lose a decent amount of units there. But I want to say it's more than acceptable. We have a bunch of ultras on the way. Kindness plating more than halfway done. This is still a tiny bit scary, but the Ling Roach Ravager count is high enough. And here are those tiny ultras, guys. They're tiny, but sexy. I would love a parabomb in the middle of all these medevacs, because why the hell not? I don't know if this is really needed. All the queens marching to the other side of the map. Reyna says, well, I think it is needed. Well, this is right before Kindness, though, guys. I don't really like this. Can we please at least wait for those extra armors to kick in? If the Ultras don't have the upgrade that just finished up on the right side of our screen, Marines and Marauders, they do all right. Once the Ultras do have Kindness, that's obviously where it becomes a lot more difficult for Bayer. We have a Parasitic Bomb going down in the middle of the Metavex. Good split off there by Ryong. Doesn't take too much splash damage off it, but... Reyna's army here is obviously quite powerful. Off grip needs to be a tiny bit careful. Almost feels that Reyna is getting a little impatient. Don't think that was super necessary, but he's on 96 rounds. I think our boy is doing quite all right. Look at these medevacs, by the way. There's so many of them, yet they are very low on energy. I think Ryung knows that he is in a bit of a pickle here in game one. Reyna never started up plus three melee. He does have Adreno Glance, as far as I know. I'm pretty certain I saw that finish up a long time ago. I think it was one of the first things he uh, started as soon as the Hive was done. Oh, poor Ultra is stuck. Ultra needs to wait for those 14 Banelings. As Rainer is working on the rocks, wants to get through it. Ryong has pretty good vision of this. You always need to respect the Liberators, guys. No matter how good a game is going for the Zergi respect the lips because you can take what could normally be a bad fight can turn into an absolutely disastrous fight real quick when there's a bunch of liberators doing its thing Ryong has floated over his main base to that nine o'clock so you guys think that Ryong is a four base Terran right now well he sort of is but not really that's just the main that got floated over still a little bit scary right with 3-3 bio if we have 3-3 which we should yeah, 3-3 three, three bio and a whole bunch of lips. It's still something that Reyna's gonna have to respect, but Reyna's obviously in a good spot. Lens of Fungo on the bottom side of our screen. Ravage is gonna try to take care of some of these Liberators. We are running through a lot of circles, but the Ultras are big, the Ultras are powerful. In the end, Reyna will lose the vast majority of these Ultras, but I think he took down enough units with him to make that a very acceptable trade. Three Liberators remain over here. Ryong stimming units from his side of the map because he knows that he cannot lose this army. For the second time, Reyna is going to be forced to give up a hatchery by the looks of it. Obviously, on creep, we should be able to get a couple of decent trade. Queen's helping out now as well. That's nice. Extra lips show up, but they are a little bit too late. I think that Reyna is going to get our first point on the board here. I want to say I don't really see this going wrong anymore. I hope I cannot see this go wrong anymore as Reyna does need to take care of these final liberators. There's a tank there in the top left that's getting a couple good shots up. We've got six Ultras on the way, guys. And these are plus three armor Ultras with Kindness Plating. And they don't even give a damn about them Liberators. We have a few more Vipers show up. A Parasitic Bomb in the middle of all the Metavax. That obviously means that they cannot really heal these units anymore. We've got one Brave Muna on the way. Spire finished up. So we have a Muna, a couple of Corruptors. And I think that Reyna can do this all day, every day with his 91 drones. Even if he's one upgrade behind. But not even that will last forever. Not a bad game by Ryong though. The Ryong is definitely battling. I love you guys for appraising Ryong for his performance in the WTL. I think this was pretty good. He did a whole lot better than most of the people did in Game is 8 against Reyna, to be completely fair. <laughs> but I think in the end, this game belongs to the Italian Stallion. Obviously, he will be able to put two and two together once he sees the orbital there, realize that that is the main that got floated over. Marvin, the Mira. Why is it Marvin? What is the story behind Marvin the Muda? Also have Burrow finishing up in the near future. Raina knows that I love talking about Burrow Banelings. <laughs> He's molding it. Oh, there he is! There he is, baby! Yes! Get that reactor, mate! You go! <laughs> if Roddy was a Muda, that'd be me. 
But guys, I'm helping winning WTL Codes. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, sorry for going 0-2 against Nice. Jeez, Louise, don't kill me. Don't kick me off the team. <laughs> Burrow is done, by the way. Ryong really trying to turtle up right now with extra lips, tanks, and a bunch of goals on the way. And those bio units are stuck though, and here comes the Bane Train, or should we call it the Bane Train. As a few blinding clouds land as well, the tanks not quite sure what they want to go for. A good micro there in the end by Beyond. Uh, should be by Ryong. Well, it's giving me the feeling that he's Beyond. He's legit playing pretty good, but I think at this point he is sweeping leaves on the windy day. Rainer can do this all day, every day, and I simply don't think that Ryong can really keep up a whole lot longer. Another Blinding Cloud goes down. Couple Ghosts are trying to do the pew 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 thing on the Ultras, and a few of the Ultras are, me are melting. But it should still be good enough. Nice Fungo. Rainer lands a Fungo, I didn't even see the Infestor, I don't know where it is. But that is going to be good enough. GG gets called, and we get our first point on the board here in the Grand Finals of the WTL Code S. Reyna looking very good, by the way, with this haircut. I'm a big fan. I have bullied him a little bit in the past when I felt that he postponed the haircuts for a little too long. Looking like a champ right there. He's looking like 150,000 bucks. <laughs> what about the Red Bull sponsorship? I think Red Bull is very happy with Reyna. They posted quite a bit about him. They also posted a cool video the other day of Rainer visiting the uh, Athlete Performance Institute somewhere, I think in Austria actually, at the Spielberg ring. You're cute. Me? Or Rainer? Hello, Cuckoo. What's the score, old man? Uh, at the moment, 2-1 in favor of... I mean, 2-1 doesn't really make any sense, right? We lost one player. They haven't lost a player yet, but we have taken the 1-0 lead in the second series. So I guess it's 1-0 for them. Is that how we call it? It's 1-0 for them, but we have a game point in the second set. We're just starting, Cuckoo. Grand Finals just starting. Rainer needs to win so we can hear the doot doot You know what? Rainer taking the 1 0 lead. I, I think our first point in our first ever WTO Code Ask Grand Finals, the biggest Star 2 team competition out there, absolutely deserves a. Rainer and Max are good buddies, so. Max approves. He's probably watching as we speak. Yeah, I guess it's already 1-1, one, one, but then it's not really 1-1 one, one yet, because it can also be 1-2, right? <laughs> Are they going to send out Maru versus Rainer? Well, there is one very important thing to keep in mind, guys. And, and once more, it's always important not to get too carried away, right? Because if we start planning the next series, and suddenly something goes terribly wrong, we all look stupid. So we always take it one series at a time. But if Rainer does win this series, 2-0... And that obviously means that they are forced to send out someone else, which is not the case yet. The next series starts off on Neo Humanity. How many coffees do I drink today? Today I've had a decent amount, mate. Maybe a little more than I would have liked to, but... I'm at like my fourth or fifth coffee since 11 a.m. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I would not make it. It's like I have right now this weird feeling of like fatigue and hype at the same time and that just kind of makes me a bit dizzy and drowsy, but it's all good. Mm. Alrighty guys, here we go. In the top left side of Greswan, we are looking at the main base of Basilisk, 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 Gamers 8, a champion, uh, Raynor. I know I messed up last time, so I make I made up for it. In the bottom right side of Grass 1, we are looking at the main base of the man that's representing on-site 
Got a 2-0 over Trigger, down 0-1 in his second series is Ryong. Definitely playing really good, by the way. I said it many times, I am not the neutral commentator, guys. I'm the biased commentator. I'm only cheering for my boys, my team. But we will always give credits and love to the people that deserve it. And Ryong has played a very good day of StarCraft so far. He can be proud of his performance already. I'm sure that he would love a whole lot more. I would like to see Reyna just tying things up. Caffeine overdose. I've had some water as well, no worries. Though the bigger problem is that I just haven't really been able to eat since yeah, yesterday at the wedding. Like the last thing we had was the official wedding dinner at like 8, 9 p.m. And after that had a couple drinks, had some wine with Benny and uh, Stefano, which was a lot of fun. Some good laughter. Then traveled home. Everything was closed at the airport from like 1 a.m. till 4. Then I came home and I was like, alright, let's do it like a little two-hour power nap. And then I woke up and I just went live immediately. Hmm. That is actually true, by the way, Go Prince. Eight is the lucky number of the Chinese, so maybe them giving Rainer the 88 ranking is like a nice thing. But yeah, it obviously, it's kind of hard to explain how Reyna went from 92 to 88 after playing one of the best tournaments of his career. Where he honestly looked semi-untouchable, especially in the playoffs. It really did feel that he was in a league of his own. To then lower his ranking by 4 as well. Not even that he stayed the same or they gave him minus 1. Like, he got extra points in earnings, right? Because you get 1 point per $100,000 you earn. So he gets an extra point there. Good job here by Ryong, by the way. Rain and not very happy with that. Nice read by Ryong. Seems like he's done his homework. Kind of impressive. Ryong is 32 and still playing really good. My face when I'm 36 and I'm also playing really good. Someone at the WTL decides it. I think it's a mix between the WTL staff and the WTL casters. But they definitely cause a little bit of controversy every now and then. Is there only specific points on the guys where the drone needs to go? No, so for the people who don't really know how that little dance works, you can take an extractor. If a reaper is standing next to it but if the reaper presses hold position and it stands right right next to the extractor then the drone cannot possibly take the extractor and obviously it wouldn't have enough time to morph somewhere else so it was just good reaper positioning by ryong if the uh, yeah if the reaper is in the correct spot the drone can never morph into an extractor right next to the reaper yeah ryong is early game is good i still think last game Maybe Reyna dodged like a minor bullet by just having a much easier time in the mid game, right? Like those eight Hellions and the Reaper and the two Cloak Banshees. It's supposed to always find something. Ryong losing a single Cloak Banshee before literally getting anything done to a bunch of Queens in the center of the map. That's just a very big booboo. It's a shame for Ryong because he has played very good besides that. But that was a, a costly mistake. StarCraft 2 is very brutal. Obviously, it was a long game with a lot of fights that went back and forth, but every pro gamer will go back to that first Cloak Banshee and be like, that's not supposed to happen. If those two Banshees are just annoying for a while, they help out defensively, offensively, reduce the drone count by a bit, and you just get a very different game. I didn't know that Boxer was still playing. I know that Boxer has been very into poker for a while, but a lot of these guys, uh, they have it good, right? Because they get all the, the sponsored treatments and they just get invited to all these tournaments and you just play tournament after tournament and then eventually everyone is going to have a run. Like, you need to be kind of bad to never have a run. <laughs> yeah, but I think since the last time... What did Reyna do? He literally only went 1-1, I guess, right? Against Rion. Because we didn't play after a home story cup. After home story cup, we, I think we literally just played one match. So maybe they gave him minus 4 for going 1-1 against Rion. Yeah, that could be it, but that's still kind of crazy. Because indeed, the double armory, guys. Rion is going to switch things up a little bit. His bio control has been impressive today. 
but he says enough with the bio. I think he's already on four gases. Double factory, double armory. He is uh, mecking it up. Hmm. The cloak Banshees have made a return. Rainer gets a Spire. Obviously, it is important for Rainer to know as quickly as possible what he's going up against. I think at this point, he's not 100% certain. And if it was only WTL, then it wouldn't make any sense that they reduced Serral's rating because all that Serral ever did was win. <laughs> it's okay, guys. Let's move on. We already knew that the ratings were a bit silly. After the 88 for Rainer, we know that they are very silly. And we're moving on. <laughs> Rainer is going to drop double Evo Chamber and a Roach Warn. That gives me the idea that he knows exactly what is up over here. That's uh, early Thors, by the way. Is there a chance he goes Medivac here too? I haven't seen like the double Medivac Thor opening in forever. Yes, guys. It's obviously a bit different than how we used to see it. A long time ago, this was actually the meta. The double Thor drop. And it only had one purpose, and that is going to cancel on the fourth base. And if it would get a cancel, then the Zergs were obviously in trouble. Rainer fires up seven Mudas. Hmm. All right. Ryong is Banshee, still hovering around the triangle base of Rainer. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. We know that Ryong is good. And this kind of stuff, like one bad fight is all it really takes. And then you just can't really turn things around anymore. Mech is funny how it works. I also feel that Mech is the one thing that stock of two players in general that are diehards and normally think along, uh, think among the same lines. They have very mixed opinions over. Some will always say it's terrible, and some will always fear it. And I'm a bit in the camp of the people that fear it. I fear Mech. I even fear Mech when I play Protoss. And I know that's ridiculous. But I do. <laughs> I'd rather play against the guy with the gun than play against a bunch of Thors and tanks. <laughs> wow, he's actually flying into the main base. But we've got Mudas out. Mudas are in the main base. There is a single missile turret, and missile turret is going to get repaired. Now, Ryong obviously will feel a little bit awkward. One Banshee, will he cloak it? Will he cloak it? Yes, he does cloak it at the very last second. It's a tiny Muda investment. Like, Raynor is not doubling or tripling down on these Mudas. It's just a few Mudas for a bit of map control. Making his life easier, maybe dealing with Metavax that would be hovering around his main base. Or that Raven. Why is Mac bad against Protoss? Every proto says that against Mech, you can do whatever the hell you want. As these Mudas get on top of a Raven, Law of Energy, and the Armor Missile does go down. And another third, and the Thors, but not a single Muda falls. A lot of the pros just feel that Mech is too slow, too immobile. And you can just pick it apart with Zealot run-bys, DT run-bys, and A-move it with Archon Immortal. I've always struggled, but I know that's not a fact that Mech is good against Protoss. It's just... In my personal uh, opinion, it's not as bad as people make it out to be, but that's probably a reason why we never see the top tier pros do it. Because it's not that good. <laughs> but I think things can be good at different levels, right? As we have Reyna going for a rather ambitious attack here with a couple of veinings. Is there enough firepower to kill this PF? Oh, absolutely. And it's not just the PF, guys. It's Mudas finding some damage in the triangle as well. With a couple of links and banes there, I believe, too. So 26 SCVs go down and a planetary fortress falls. And in a game where I wouldn't necessarily say that Drainer was dominating or doing great, he has just taken a pretty monstrous lead. <laughs> I think that went about as good as Rainer could have ever dreamed of. You can see Ryong wiggling in his chair a little bit. He's not happy as Rainer gets the double kill as well on a couple of tanks. I'm starting to really feel where this is going. Those tanks are on siege. It really does seem that Ryong is just kind of running out of steam. Or maybe super disappointed he lost that PF because he's bleeding out a lot of extra expensive units here. But he had no business losing. And look at Raynor. He's just exploding all across the map. Taking bases at the bottom and even right next to the main base of Ryong. Raynor at this point. He's here. He's there. He's fucking everywhere. It's our game is a champ. It's our game is a champ. He's here. He's there. He's fucking everywhere. <laughs> it's aircraft. <laughs> sure, mate. That's Mount. Let's moan about one of the most talented individuals to ever touch this game. Let's not talk about how good he is. Let's talk about his race. That seems fun. 
Let me know what your email address is, mate. If I ever want to have a really depressed night, I want to invite you over. You can just bring me down. I would love that. Mm. Ryong on a little bit of copium here. And on then again, if we are mecking, you often find yourself in these spots where you're like, well, I think I'm kind of dead, but let's just try one more time to get a couple tanks out. Maybe my opponent takes a very bad fight near a planetary fortress. Hang over, buddy. <laughs> no. That, that man does not move, mate. He's definitely not sending out any emails, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> All right, Raynor is going to try one more time and see if he can just end it right here, right now. Ryong's army supply is not all that bad, but obviously taking more economic damage is going to be pretty painful here for the Korean Terran. Who's had an uh, excellent day of video gaming. Looked pretty good from time to time in game one against Raynor. Had his moments. Had a great best of two against Trigger. But it seems that 21-year-old Raynor just once more shows us that all he does is win, win, win. And the rank keeps on going down. But what a month and a half it has been for this man. And let's hope he can do that in the next game as well. Because we're going to now assume that Rainer is going to be able to bring this home. Obviously, I feel like we are seconds away from closing this out. Then we've got a big match, guys. But uh, Onside Gaming can decide what they do. Who they revive, who they want to send out. If they want to revive Ryong, which would be a bit surprising. Will it be Solar on a Neo Humanity or will it be Maru? Rain is gonna get on top of this orbital, it's not even a planetary anymore. Two tiny abducts is good enough to still get the kill on those two tanks. The Lynx, the Banes, the Rav just crash in. I gotta say, decent job there by Ryong putting a couple of those units back. That could have gone worse for Ryong. Maybe a tiny anti timing by Rainer as he did have a couple of upgrades on the way, but. Those were going to take a little while, and since he's got such a big economy, he probably didn't want to bank up all those resources and then run into way more units. So I think it was alright. Adreno glance halfway done. Rainer's just macroing. What is actually very cool about Rainer is that he makes it pretty effortless in keeping his money low. Even though he's got crazy income, but if there is ever any moment where he can get somewhat favorable traits, he's there all the time and the immediate Remax keeps on spending his money. Because it's damn hard to spend all your money if you're on 92 drones and you're making a lot of links and banes. <laughs> That's not easy, guys. Rain is making it look easy. Ryong is attacking one of these bases at the bottom side of the map. The Viper did go down there, though, without a parasitic bomb. So that's a tiny bit disappointing. Overall, well, that wasn't the greatest attack by Reyna, to be completely fair. Does seem like he has defended successfully at the bottom side. They take out a base. Couple SCVs. That wasn't quite it. Ryong does have 119 army supply. Now, obviously, defending with tank siege up is a completely different ball game than actually being the aggressor as a Terran player and being forced to fight on creep. He's gonna go for it, the Hell Mary play. Corrosive has some potential here, as you guys can see, one of the tanks actually going down. The Manifex boosting forward, dropping out all these blue flame hellbats on top of the tanks. Raider is still gonna have to respect this. There's a lot of uh, blue on the other side of the map. I'm not exactly sure what it is, guys. If it's roaches or links, Raynor is going for a run by. It's a tiny link run by, but it is packing a point because these are plus three links with adrenal glands. And those links don't fook around. You guys can see two tanks very casually falling as well. Ryong is just focused on this army. He knows that this is not an army that he's ever going to replace if he loses it. So he just does not want to lose it. But taking out all these bases and keeping these units alive seems like a bit of a stretch. I mean, it does need to be a little bit careful. Like, as I said, there is a world where this goes terribly wrong. I do really hope that's not the world we live in. Didn't think that this was ever still gonna have a somewhat scary moment, and it shouldn't be scary. Maybe I'm just worried because it's our boy. It's a WTL code as grand finals, and it's a very important match for us. As a few blinding clouds go down, a couple of the hellbats getting picked off by these ravagers, and that went more than all right. Like the longer the all-out super important game deciding fight takes place, like the more that's postponed, the more obviously it favors Rainer and his crazy economy. 
fighting on his side of the map. It's very hard for Ryong to reinforce. Rain is going to be forced to let this hatchery die. He's going to try to get the Ravages in range one more time. Couple of Ferrosi balls. Those all miss. 107 army supply against 107 army supply. We have some Vipers in the mix. I think the Lings are waiting for their moment to shine. But it's kind of hard to shine against all these Hellbats. I think Rainer is playing a beautiful patient game though. He knows time is on his side. Our boy is maxed out. Has taken a 10 army spell. That's a lot of Ravages by the way. <laughs> Ravages excellent units in buying time. Rainer is counter attacking once more. Getting on top of a few more SCVs. Ryong now realizing that this base at the bottom side of the map is honestly kind of undefended. So he can just go for it. So a lot of drones dying at a very rapid pace at this point. But that also means that Rainer can get a little bit more army supply. Gets on top of those three tanks though. Did the hatchery die? No, the hatchery didn't even die. So it's just 19 drones that died to one tank and a hellbat? <laughs> Does Ryong have like any income at this point, guys? <laughs> Uh, the Vipers are going to go for it. They're going to drop some Blinding Clouds. A little abductor as well. I'm not sure if that was the most useful abductor of all time. But in the end, it is good enough for the Ravages to get in range. And Raynor ties things up. Both Onside and Basilisk have now lost one player in the Grand Finals of the WTL Code S. Raynor also gets... You know, a little personal revenge for the regular season where he went 1-1 one and one against Ryong. And he was obviously not super happy with that. So. Hmm. Uh, so the players are letting me know as well that game 1 is on US West. Game 2 is on Central. And Rainer is already letting me know that it's gonna be Maru, guys. I know you guys have had some fun predicting. This is going to be a tough prediction. I'll choose the prediction outcome. Rainer did take out Ryong 2-0. Now we've got a big one. And that is Rainer versus Maru. Start map. Neo Humanity. Best of two. It's going to be one of the tougher predictions that you guys are going to have to make in a little while. I think this is good. I'll give you guys 10 minutes. It should be Gucci. Da, 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 da. Hopefully you guys are having some fun. There is a chance that Rainer Maru is going to be a very long series. So what I will do guys is take a very quick break. We're all tied up. There's a whole lot of Starcraft to be played. We both still have two more players alive. And then we have a revive and an ace match maybe potentially. So... Plenty of Starcraft coming up. I'm going to go ahead and take a little break. And after that, I'll be back with Rainer versus Maru. What a match. See you guys soon. Isn't that what we all live for? Basilisk versus Onside Gaming. Game three. 就让比赛开始吧。All righty, guys. Here we go. Round three. Patrick. That's not round three. Round three. <laughs> Fight. <laughs> Top left side of Neo Humanity. We are looking at the main base of our Korean Terran. According to some, the GOAT, definitely the greatest Terran player on this planet. On site gaming, Zamaru. On the bottom right side, our gamers, a champ, Basilisk Rainer. Tying things up after 2 0 -ing. Why is my Spotify so high? After 2 0 ing Ryong. Holy shit, this is huge. It's a big match. This is definitely a very important one. If Maru does get a 2-0 here, obviously things get a little bit scary. But I'm not worried. I believe in our boy. Even though online, game one is often on US West. So I think especially the first game is going to be very hard. The way that they mostly do it to keep things as fair as possible for everyone who's not super familiar with competitive StarCraft 2. Is that when a European player plays against a Korean player, game one is on US West, where the Koreans have better ping than the Europeans. 
and then the second game is on US Central, and US Central obviously favors Europeans over Koreans, so... Game on here, Rainer with a ping disadvantage and Neo Humanity against Maru. It's gonna be a very difficult one. But 21 year old Rainer is on a bit of a roll, baby. Big match, I'm excited. Whew. What are you guys voting for? What's the big, uh, the ping difference? So I cannot really speak for Rainer, even though he showed me a screenshot earlier that Rainer actually had 200 ping on US West. Hopefully, that was just like a minor spike. And it's a little bit closer to like 180 or 185. But I get around uh, 125 or 130 on US Central and I get like 180 on US West. So for me it's around a 50 ping difference but it's different for everyone depending on where you are, how your internet is, etc. I don't know what the Korean ping is, but I think the Koreans do US West probably like 130 to 140 and then US Central they're gonna have 185, 190. First Reaper on the other side of the map. Uh, oh, Rainer cannot save that drone. That's definitely a little bit of that thing already kicking in. The second drone does get saved as he morphed into an extractor. This bunker, by the way, is scary. We uh, saw, I think it was Maru, right? Against Solar at Game is 8, if I recall that correctly. Getting a kill on the third hatchery with this bunker on Gresmon, unless I'm confusing my games, but I'm pretty certain that happened. Uh, this is already kind of dangerous, guys. This is kind of dangerous. Three Reapers and a Marine right now inside of this bunker. Rainer's gonna struggle here, keeping this hatchery alive. Those queens, you need to be super careful too, because Reapers do have decent damage. Can Rainer eventually clean this up without taking too much damage? Hatchery is starting to run a little bit low on HP. Maru hops all three Reapers into the main base, knowing that Rainer has sent pretty much everything to the low ground. It's great army movement so far by Maru, and Rainer definitely in a little bit of trouble. Can we at least surround one of the Reapers so far? The answer is no. We always surround all three. Six drones. Losing six drones is painful, but surrounding all three Reapers do make you feel a little bit better. And obviously, ultimate disaster avoided by losing Queens in the Hatchery. I guess because we're playing gasless, it's not that bad, right? I, I think that was kind of acceptable. That could have gone a whole lot worse. I'm not saying it's great, because six drones is obviously a pretty scary number. That's a lot of drones to lose, but... I kind of see many scenarios where that would have gone a whole lot worse. Hmm? Would love to see a stim snipe, yeah, but that's not really possible. Rainer does not really have the firepower for that. Obviously, Maru could always pull some SCVs or drop a mule to repair that in the end. And if Rainer loses all of his links, then the Marines can just walk to the other side of the map. So, can't really snipe Stim here. This is not really a play. You can dream. But that ain't happening. Rainer on 47 drones as we speak. Maru on the 35 SCVs. But Stim more than halfway done. I'm definitely a tiny bit concerned for that first moment where Stim is going to kick in. If Rainer can avoid taking too much damage from the moment Stim is done and the first Widowmine drop arrives, then we're in a very decent spot. But the next 90 seconds are going to be a bit bumpy and are going to be a bit scary. I kind of like how Maru is playing this game from Maru's point of view. I'm worried for Rainer. Let's see how good the crisis management is. Rainer does get the heads up that this thing, that this is happening. There's a couple of links here. We're going to have to pull the drones away very quickly. Because we cannot really deny all the Widow Mines, right? Honestly, that went pretty good. That went very good. Wow, Rainer got three out of four Widow Mines. Lost the zero drones. Yeah, well, we'll take that any day of the week, guys. And twice on a Sunday in the Grand Finals of a WTL Code S. That was very good for Rainer. Especially because Maru didn't really pull the trigger with those Marines. No. Why so biased? Because I'm literally part of the teammate. It's my team. It's my friend. It's my teammate. Am I allowed to be biased here? You would prefer me to betray my team as Rainer does end up losing a couple of queens here. 
it's a bit of an issue but in the end gets a lot of the marines so that started off very bad and a decent there was a retarget why is the observer always looking around hey the queen can kill it <laughs> oh what a save what a save obviously maru had some good movement there but rainer in the end not losing a single drone that's also kind of sexy yeah And that was, uh, that widow mine was awfully close too, to the drone. <laughs> that was lost mining time, obviously. Maru did good there, don't get me wrong. But in the end, Raynor made the best of it. I'm definitely very happy with how Raynor managed his way through the last two minutes. I think, as I said, this could have been very scary. There were multiple moments where this game could have already spiraled out of control. But Raynor is looking pretty sharp here. There is a drop -a lord on the top side of the map. That's a funny play because obviously we don't have overlord speed. So that's going to be the slowest 8 link drop in a while. But <laughs> I mean 8 links can definitely be very annoying. If you just move out and you don't really have any firepower in your natural. The observer is also going to show us these extra barracks finishing up on the side of Maru. I don't know about this Raynor. Okay, it's okay, I guess. Actually, very nice that for like two seconds there, it was 1 1 on the links and 0 0 on the Marines. And that was the tiniest of tiny windows, but that actually made it a much better trade than it otherwise would have been. If that would have been reversed, you don't want to take fights like that. Maru only starting armor here, by the way. Okay, shouldn't get too excited. Starts up plus two attack immediately. Thank you, the Druid. Welcome, Eddie promise to give all of you guys proper shout outs by the time the stream is done as Maro this time around with way more marines and even upgrades is obviously going to take a decent trade there near the Zelnaga Wax Tower I'm not sure how Raynor his main encounter is here comes that drop lord guys it's only eight links it's almost a shame that the links attacked the supply depot there for a split second it gave Maro a tiny bit of a heads up okay friendly fire nothing not super impactful but it bought Raynor a tiny bit of time a little bit of breathing room. Because we have a bunch of Miras chilling in the bottom left side. Rainer firing up Burrow plus one flyer attacks. There's no missile turret here, so maybe the Miras can just get on top. Not a single missile turret anywhere, guys. That's kind of wild. That's honestly kind of wild. Maru does have a terrifying army in the center of the map. The Mudas have potential, but obviously Maru has potential with that army. But going on creep is hard, but seeing Mudas show up in your main base and not being ready for it at all. Obviously Maru is not faced by it, because Maru is never really faced by anything. Yeah, for Raynor with your Mudas. No, Raynor and his Mudas in the bottom right side, guys. The Mudas is getting absolutely obliterated by a bunch of those Marines. And perhaps that is why Maru is not faced by it. And this game has just turned into a disaster. Within 10, 15 seconds where it felt that maybe there was some potential for Rainer to get some chaos going. The Ling run by gets absolutely denied as well. Only a couple of Lings make it in. In the end, Maru is still active in the center of the map. And 10 minutes into Neo Humanity, it kind of feels that this game is close to coming to an end already. Rainer losing all those Mudas in the main base to those Marines. And the Ling run by not getting anything done. Maru did not panic when those Mudas showed up. And he shows us that it was for all the right reasons. Losing the center base and the rich Vespian geyser is obviously very painful. With a bunch of extra Bailings finishing up. I want to say maybe on three Rainer can get a slightly better fight, but. Normally, once you take such a beating against a man like Maru, you just don't really turn it around anymore. Rainer drops a lot of transfuse on the hatchery, keeps it alive. Bailing connection is not bad. But Rainer at this point needs a lot more than not bad. Maru is still here and he ain't going anywhere as he stims forward again. He wants to get the hatch, he's awfully close to getting the hatch. Ludo's finding a few pickups here in the center of the map. That's cute play by Rainer. Can Rainer ever keep this hatchery alive? It honestly feels like it's an impossible task. The Muda count is just not that scary. Maru can deal with it with the reinforcements. Good Bane connections there on the left side though. Can he connect with the final few Marines? Well, Raina gets on top of the tanks where the reinforcements have arrived for Maru. 
Rainer had his moments there, but he just feels that Mario is a bit too well set up in the center of the map. Too big, too powerful here in game one on Neo Humanity. Nice hot pick up there on the tank as well. It was an empty medevac that maybe flew into a bit of trouble, but Maru is where he wants to be. Mudos are gonna try to get on top of the lips, gets one of the lips. But Rainer has lost the center base, the triangle base, and now also lost that base at 4 o'clock. I think that's just a few too many hatcheries going down to have a recover from. Rainer burrows a couple of bailings in the center of the army, but Maru sees it, throws down a scan. And Maru takes the 1 0 lead against the game as a champ. That was on US West, though. Uh, for the neutral spectator, guys, this grand finals is definitely delivering. For the neutral spectator, I think this is everything you can hope for. On site takes the lead once more here in the grand finals of the WTO Code S. But obviously, we are far from done. There is a revive, there is a potential ace match, we still have zero. There's a whole lot to play for. And that was Neo Humanity and Ping Disadvantage. Now Rainer can pick every any map besides Altitude. Altitude is vetoed by Onsite, so we cannot pick Altitude. But he can obviously pick Ancient if he wants. In a weird way, Rainer got incredibly good. Like, I'll actually, I'm, I'm dead honest. I'm actually a little bit curious what Rainer picks here. Because against Clem, he picked Babylon as opening map. Like, when Pig was casting it, he was like, oh, it's Clem's map pick. But it wasn't. And I said it on the desk. It was Raynor who picked Babylon. Because Raynor has practiced some of these good Terran maps so freaking much that he got pretty confident on it. So he likes Babylon. He actually likes Dragon Skills. And he doesn't even pick Ancient all that early in a best of five. Like, I'm sure he doesn't mind it. But I kind of wonder what he picks here. It could just be Ancient, and I'm hyping something up that's not really there. Or not really hyping it up, but I'm just curious. <laughs> Thank you, Air, for gifting a sub. Thank you, Mr. Drew, for the seven months. And let's see what it will be. What is our boy going to pick? Obviously, a 1-1 here is not bad for us. Uh, Maru is, of course, very scary. This is, these two teams, they just have some serious heavy hitters, right? Like Solar can go on a rampage, Rainer can go on a rampage, Serro can go on a rampage, and Maru can definitely go on a rampage as well. So I think a 1 1 here is, is not too bad, especially not considering that this was Neo Humanity as forced starting map. No, it's not locked. Rainer can pick any map that's not altitude. He picks Ancient. Okay. Come on, boy. Cheer up. My boy is not looking happy. But he is looking good. Roddy cannot go on a rampage, mate. The only rampage Roddy goes on is uh, his fridge by the time that this stream is over. Because the last proper meal I had was yesterday night in Sweden. So there will be a rampage in this household, but it will not be done behind the computer. <laughs> Alrighty, big match, guys. A very important one. Bottom left side of Ancient. We're looking at the main base of the Italian story and the home story and game is a champion Basilisk Rainer. As he takes on this man who looked damn good on Neo Humanity in the top right side representing on-site gaming, it's Maru. Rainer robbed us of an all kill. Can't really be an all kill. We already had an all kill today guys and as amazing as Yona was you know, this is cool too, right? Like you, you, you want the Grand Finals to be close, you want it to be competitive, you don't want it to be easy to predict, so... If you are a neutral StarCraft 2 fan, you gotta love this stuff so far. And the number one and number two of the regular season, going toe for toe so far in the Grand Finals. The music jinxed him, better not play it again. I think we can all live with a 1-1 one, one here. It's okay. Rainer, Rainer is a Red Bull family member. So you guys can't really put it on that. Sarah can still go 14-0 and 0 today. Is that so? Oh, yes. Yeah, but that would mean that Maru has to 2 0 Rainer. We don't want that. You are correct, but we don't want that. Spam this board to help Raynor. 
Why not? That means Sarah with Maru. We could still get Sarah against Maru too, guys. Even if they go 1-1 one, one here. Hmm. Well, no. That, it's not totally true, uh, Boya. Can he go six, like he can definitely go six and zero because if Maro would win two zero here, which obviously we're not hoping for, then I guess the defensive would go to an ace match or not. You can have the inside revive. I feel like you can. There's a whole bunch of Starcraft left to be played. This is gonna be a long broadcast. It's already kind of late in China. We obviously had a I don't want to say crazy amount of downtime, but it was a proper long break between the semifinals and the finals. Roddy, every intro so far can I introduce you to our lord and savior. The game is a champion, Rainer. Yeah, man. Fuck Roddy for hyping up Rainer for winning a $150,000 tournament. Jade Louise, we get it. Talk about Maru winning the Korean Weekly. Sure, I'll do that, mate. I apologize. Why is it WTL now instead of GSL? Because these are two completely different competitions. GSL did have a team competition a very long time ago, but pff, I think the last time that ran was 2013 or 2014. GSL is still a thing. It's a 1v1 competition in Korea. WTL is the biggest team competition out there. Yeah, GSTL was cool. I definitely... Uh, have some fun memories of watching that as a young nerd a long time ago. Hmm. The dumb TV media player with only 360p. But do you guys remember the MLG days when they tried to introduce pay-per-view? They had an MLG in New York that did look very cool. And you could only watch it if you bought the pay-per-view. <laughs> I think they only did that once or maybe twice. I I was actually just like too broke to buy it. I really wanted to watch the tournament and I just couldn't. I was living in Germany of minimum wage and then having to pay rent and food. I was like, I cannot. <laughs> I would love to buy it, but I simply cannot. So then I found a Russian dude who was restreaming it. <laughs> I was like, I want to watch it. It's my job, but I can't afford it. It sucks. <laughs> All right, we have our first Banshee. A Cloak Banshee in the bottom side of the map. Cloak is done. Obviously, we're not expecting Maru to make the same mistake as Ryung made. Relatively early Cloak there, but I think the Overlord revealed it anyway. Spore Crawler could have maybe been a tiny bit more towards the right. But it's all good. So far, Rainer not taking any damage. Oh no, I'm not blaming them, uh, TTA Larkin. I'm not moaning about it. I was just sharing some history. That's all. Mm. Not the most successful Banshee that the world has ever seen. Rainer will obviously gladly take that. We have the Lair finishing up, double Evo going down. Obviously with this opening, Rainer is going to get relatively quick access to Bailing Speed. Overall, Maro's build so far, a little bit all over the place. It's still just two bases, as he's dropping extra barracks as well. So we're very late a third CC on the side of Maru. If we're ever even going to get one, but I can obviously only assume that we will. Rainer has a decent amount of map vision. You guys can see a couple of links moving around. I know the quality of this stream is not ultra high. That's not my fault, by the way. This is the best that I can do. But you guys can see the links roaming around. Rainer does need to make sure that he doesn't take too much damage from these 16 Marines with Steam. They may not have combat shield. We don't want to lose our spawning pool. Like, losing the extractor, sure, whatever. The spawning pool is a bigger issue, and Rainer is going to rebuild the spawning pool immediately. Does not want to take a bad fight here. And he says, you can have it. I'm going to let it die. Now, Queen falls as well. So definitely a little scary at this point. I'd love to see Reyna start a plus one melee. At this point, Reyna can't really produce a whole lot. Oh, man, this is scary. Losing that pool is rough. Losing that pool is rough. We need a couple of overlords because Reyna is close to being supply block too. Maru is rallying a lot of units to the other side of the map. It's two base Maru. Who is damn serious about this? Rainer's hatchery is gonna get killed. That's not a cancel. You can see Rainer shake his head there. He's not happy with that. 
Now he does have some money in the bank. I feel like Reyna doesn't know, eh? It really does feel that Reyna does not know. Maru is here with 68 army supply and plus one. Come on, Reyna. Okay, that's good. Couple of links in the center of the map, picking up some reinforcements and also forcing the other units to turn around. Two tanks loading into the meta pack, but... All right, the longer this goes, the more I, I don't mind it. Like, uh, sure, siege up all you want there. And don't get me wrong, this is annoying eventually to clean up, but every second that goes by, I'm starting to become more and more a believer in our boy, because it's still to base Maru. Rainer seems like he might lose that Evo, but he wasn't researching anything anyway, so who really gives it to them? Maru is giving Rainer a lot of time. This could have been a lot worse, man. Yeah, I was wondering if Reyna cancelled that, because I was just looking at the Evo, I was like, holy smokes, this is the slowest plus one armor ever. So you might be onto something. I didn't really see it, maybe he needed money for extra bayonings because he was worried. Because that made no sense to me. I was like, either this is the slowest minute in history, or we cancelled it and we started it up again. Queen count is quite high, Reyna still floating a little bit of money, that's obviously painful. Does get a few marines, gets maybe two tanks. First tank is absolutely dead. The second one is going to fall as well. And Maru is still just on two bases, 49 SCVs. This reminds me a little bit of the uh, inside and outside and moon dance and whatever that green map was called. With that little river in the center where we saw Bunny go for a couple of these weird two base all ins and Bjorn as well that lasted forever. Rainer is going to lose a handful of queens here. The marines definitely doing their thing. Hitting just a bit harder with plus one. Reyna can rebuild Queens. Reyna has minerals. What was the name of that stupid map again, guys? Previous map pool. Tropical? Par no, it wasn't tropical. That was a different one. Waterfall. Yeah. I feel like on Waterfall we saw kind of games like this. But Waterfall was tiny. And it also felt that if you're sieging up at the bottom side of the main, it was like immediately in range of the natural too. This... I want to say feels a little bit less intimidating, but obviously Reyna could still be in some trouble. Burrow is done. I don't know if it's going to come into play or not. Queen's doing that thing. Spore Crawler helping out a little bit as well. Reyna does need a few extra units in the main base though. Like he's doing great in the center of the map, but we need to respect these Marines that are literally on top of all of our Queens. Careful with the tanks, Reyna. Careful. Ooh, you saw that tank look. The tank was loaded. Oh, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Reyna down 10 supply. Does have plus one carapace at this point. Lost a lot of queens. That's a bit scary. Maru picks up all the marines. Reyna is going to lose at least... Excuse me. Maru is going to lose at least one tank. Big tank shots from the low ground. Damn, Reyna missed the barreled bane links. Maybe he wanted more. Maybe he just thinks that he can fight this in the center of the map. Maru is going to try to save it. Stressful game between these two here. Not a bad trade there for Maru overall. Reyna tries to get on top of these Marines. Burrows them. Can we get... Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Obviously, at this point, Maru knows that this is something he's going to have to worry about for a long time. Reyna has a lot of gas. 63 drones against 49 SCVs. Two base Maru. Main base pretty much mined out. I don't hate these trades. Yeah, that's the first tank going down. The second tank is actually going to fall as well. And now it's just Marines. 1-1 one, one Marines with a whole bunch of medivacs. I'm starting to believe, guys, that... Rainer is stabilizing. He's still down 24 army supply. It's obviously still scary. Okay, there are more tanks and more liberators. I didn't actually see those tanks. Now I'm worried again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rainer Maru here in the grand finals with the WTL Kodas. Baning Nest under some serious pressure. And the Baning Nest will fall. That is a problem. Rainer does have a decent amount of Banes. What he really needs is just a shit ton of Marines at this point. Snipe that Medivac. One queen hit away from sniping that Medivac. Banelings on the high ground, getting some. The liberators are a bit of an issue. Can the queens get on top of the lips? The first tank will fall. He burrowed a few more banelings. I'm not sure if Maru saw that. I don't think Maru saw that. Rainer gets another good burrowed baneling connection. But he lost the baneling nest. I'm not sure if we rebuild it. Did we rebuild that baneling nest, guys? Did we rebuild this baneling nest? It's just awfully close between these two. The queens trying to do their thing. They really need to get that liberator. They will get that liberator. Links on top of the final tank as well, but Maru has one more tank showing up. There are still two burrowed bailings on the other side of the map. I think Reyna just used them. I think Reyna just used his two burrowed bailings on the other side of the map. 
Maru is still enjoying a 20 army supplied lead though. Both of them having an insane amount of gas. This is where you know you're looking at two monsters just pushing each other to the limit. Like Maru on 2k gas, Rainer on 1800 gas. When is the last time you've seen that in a 12 minute game? These two really going for it. Rainer down 25 army supplied, losing extra queens, trying to get a new bailing nest up. It's starting to get very, very scary at this point. Rainer even going to pull some drones. That's normally never a good sign. <laughs> the matter of fact count is so fucking high. We do have some extra queens showing up though. It's links, it's queens, it's drones. Rainer forces Maru to pick up. Maru is still enjoying. That work lead has floated over his main base. And that means that the doors are wide open for counterattacks at this point. But with what units? Rainer has no units. And Rainer is starting to lose that economic advantage he had as well. Link gun is kind of high here though. And he did manage to get plus one melee too. Way down the line. Okay, this could be a bit awkward for Maru. Oh, I love what Maru tried to do there immediately. Just threatening to unload on the high ground, forcing Rainer to disengage. Rainer has rebuilt his baning nest. We have seven banings. I think Rainer is gonna try to just pick up more and more reinforcements. An insane game here in the grand finals of WTL Code S. The supplies are low. Burrow has been used on these drones. I'm not sure if Maru paid attention. I don't think he really did, but getting the hatchery is already a big W. Bailings are here though! No. Maru with the hot pickup. Rainer loses another base. It's still two base Maru. How many units are here? For almost 10 minutes straight, Rainer was out mining Maru. Rainer now sees this base. He still has Burrow, guys. He's burrowing a couple of bailings there. He's firing up a plus two carapace as we speak. Has immediately rebuilt the hatchery. Maru slowing things down for a split second, dropping a second eBay and an armory. Man, what a game between these two. Oh, Bailing's a little bit to the left would have been great, but it's okay. Queens! Not quite able to get that final shot off. Maru throws down a scan. A scan is expensive. This is not one of these games, guys, where Maru can just scan around for days. He is a two-base Terran on 49 SCVs. Liberator sieging up in the natural. What a game. What a game between these two titans of the StarCraft 2 universe. I love that armory positioning in the middle of the middle line. Maru has unloaded a lot of marines in the corner of Reyna's main. Reyna does some units there. Liberator under attack. One more lip under attack of a spore crawler. I don't know if it's quite dying. Reyna. No, Maru snipes both bailings immediately. But these links, they do have even upgrades. However, uh, with the medevac support, the marines take a great fight there. Rain is struggling a little bit at this point. One of the Evo Chambers very low on HP and it gets picked off. Plus two melee gets denied. But plus two Carapace is going to finish up a whole lot quicker. And there are so many Burrowed Banelings. Can we go to the left, cameraman? To the left, to the left. Rainer, please. Oh, cameraman, Rainer. What? Oh, he missed it. What the fuck? Okay, I guess it was decent. There's still a whole lot of Maru left, though. There is still a whole lot of Maru left. 66 army supply against 91. Rainer with a counterattack. This is a big one, guys. The doors are wide open. No bunker, no depots, no units. Couple links, obviously not good enough. Maru taking some economic damage now for the first time in forever, but is on top of another hatchery of Rainer. 66 army supply against 101. This is going to be very hard. It is going to be very, very hard for Rainer. He will have a minor moment where he's got an upgrade lead, but obviously that upgrade lead is going to turn into an upgrade deficit. Maru throwing down some scans, sees the queens. Rainer has a couple of links there that are being rallied straight into the meat grinder. Every single unit is so important at this point for Rainer. It feels that Maru just has a lot of firepower. Rainer needs Maru to slip up or he needs an amazing play himself. Uh, maybe both is possible as he gets on top. A couple of Bane links connecting with SCVs. Maru taking more and more economic damage. Links in the natural now too, but there is still that big army, guys. This is amazing for Reyna, don't get me wrong, but there is still that big army on the other side of the map and that army is not disappearing anytime soon. Maru bleeding out a lot as one of the Banelings gets a minor connection with the Marines. Reyna creating an insane amount of chaos. Holy fuck, this is such a sick game. It's only 17 minutes, but it feels that I've turned 40 while this game was going on. Reyna has only 32 army supply, but Maru has literally zero income. Reyna's army supply is tiny. Can Rainer clean up this army one time and one time only as he has a couple of bailings in the mix here. Gets some connections, reduces the marine count. But this is where Maru has that upgrade advantage. It's 2-2 for Maru. 
It's 1-2 for Reyna. Reyna still has links. Maru is down to his final six SCVs. Make it five, make it four. Doesn't matter. It's all about this army. How can Reyna clean up this army, though? We need Burrowed Banelings, guys. We need some of the most magical Burrowed Banelings in Scarlet versus Bomber. And I don't know if that's doable. Those Banelings connections are not all that bad. A lot of the supply is in Metavax, which is good and bad at the same time. Reyna will tap out as Maru gets on top of his final base. And a 5 SCV Maru wins an insane game on Ancient and puts on site, perhaps in the driver's speed. Oh, what a game. What a game between these two. Great performance by Maru. Painful one for our boy. And now we actually do need to uh, discuss quickly. All right. Next up, guys. Is Saro versus Maru. Saro versus Maru, map one ancient. So this was a 2 0 for Maru. Next prediction, Saro versus Maru, best of two, map one, ancient. Here you guys go, I'll give you guys uh, uh, 10 minutes, one minute. There we go. So, the way that this works right now, is that if there is a world where Saro loses, we are not done yet. We can still revive Saro. But if Saro then would push it all the way to the ace match, that's when uh, we obviously have to send out Raynor. Uh, what we can, yeah, so, but that's basically it. But, well, obviously, uh, we're full, in conf full of confidence in our man. Obviously, map one is great. This is a much better first map for uh, our boy than it was for Raynor. All right. Tiny break, guys. Sorry, I really need to drink some water. Tiny break. After that, I'll be back. Maru versus Serol. Best of two coming up. See you guys soon. We are in a tiny bit of trouble, but I believe the spirit is strong. All righty. Serol versus Maru, guys. A very important match here in the grand finals of the WTL Codas. Maybe the semifinals? They were a bit one-sided. The grand final so far is all but one-sided. So we are sending out the absolute champ of the WTL Codas Summer Season 2023. Saro with probably the best performance in WTL history so far, right? I know that WTL has been going on for a long time, but I have a very hard time believing that there is anyone who has gone 30 and 1 in maps. <laughs> Versus on-site gaming. Game Whew. 4. How she catch up. Sarah is 30 and 1 in maps. Here we go, guys. A very, very big one. A very important one. Map 1 Ancient should be on US West for the people who care. Top right side. The great Yona Sutala representing Basilisk. We need a dub. Let's do it, King Yona. In the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of the man who just played an insane game on this map. It's on-site gaming's Maru. Whew. That was that was a game, guys. The boys were video gaming. That definitely got my heart racing a little bit quicker. Or it's the fact that I barely slept in 36 hours. You guys can all blame Demu for that. But it's not his fault. He scheduled a wedding in a weekend that was supposed to be StarCraft 2 free. And then two weeks prior to the wedding, WTL was like, yeah, let's move the playoffs to that weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just constant whining about sleep. Don't stream rather than. Sure, mate. Mm-hmm. Four messages. What a guy. One of them complaining about slowly falling. The other two about me. Alright. It was a pleasure having you here, mate. And now fuck off. Actually, you can still watch. 
Isn't this the grand final? This is the grand final, but it's not necessarily the final game. What is it swearing today? I think for the six hours and thirty-one minutes I have been live, I don't think I've really sworn a whole lot. I feel like the average uh, ladder stream of any StarCraft 2 player has more swearing in an hour than I had in these six hours and thirty minutes. I just deal with stupid people in my own way. That's what makes me happy. Sarah looks kind of grumpy. He's focused. The man is dialed in. He obviously knows it's a big match. Oh. Who is Sarah talking to? I think Yona talks to himself a little bit in the beginning of games. Few links took a little sneak peek on the other side of the map. Maru does not have the SCV anymore on this side. So I don't think we really have to worry about a bunker going up. Uh, if he loses a bunch of drones, he'll be doing a lot more talking. But hopefully we don't get to see any of that. Are you not casting, by the way, uh, Naruto? Why would you not cover the final day of the WTL, mate? It's a fun day. Overall, I think it's been a pretty fun weekend. Obviously, couldn't really do it yesterday and uh, the day before, but I saw a tiny bit of the VODs and followed it live. I feel like it was a pretty good playoff so far. And especially here, the Grand Finals is really uh, working out as we're going to get a full surround on this stack lab. The Reapers were busy hopping into the main base and I actually think that Maru is going to end up losing at the very bare minimum the tech lab. Yeah, that's going to be it. Can obviously just rebuild it. Didn't really start up Stim yet, so he doesn't have a whole lot to worry about. <laughs> I'm flat at Naruto. I am flattered. Uh, I do not know what I just did. That's great. Sorry. I apologize, guys. That was a button I should not have pressed. Should have killed the reactor instead. I guess because Steam was not on the way, if he... Yeah. I guess slightly more expensive. Put it in slightly better pickup, but it's all good. Dark mode on them browsers. I've never really used that. I do turn certain pages dark, but not all of them. Is there a world, guys, where Maru goes for pretty much the exact same thing? So we're taking a look here. Five minutes into Ancient. Obviously, we did start off with a Cloaked Banshee against Raynor. And there is already a third CC floating over. So it's not it's never going to be the exact same thing. But it could still be similar tempo base. But then just with slightly different timings and a slightly bigger eco. First Liberator is going to show up. Serol seems pretty quick to respawn. Doesn't even lose a single drone. Got a little bit fortunate there with Maru deciding to unseach that Liberator when he did. So he doesn't end up losing anything. Floats over and Overlord takes a little look into the main base. There's not a whole lot to see there. I wouldn't hate it if Saro can send just a couple links to the bottom side of the map. Because it feels like the doors are wide open there. Hmm. At Twitch I do use dark mode. Buddy, what was my first touch with StarCraft? answer that after this game mate i don't think we should really talk about the history too much when it's maro against serol and serol's fourth base is actually going to get cancelled relatively easily now there is another one going up on the top side of the map but yona was not quite ready for this liberator is going to find a few pickups as well maro definitely off to an alrighty start here on ancient it's an overlord too Baning speed only 25 30 percent on the way At least that Queen is going to take care of the Liberator. Uh, felt a tiny bit sloppy. Maybe Cyril didn't totally see that one coming. Don't think there is any reason to truly picnic just yet. 
don't think Maru really is going to stick around forever on the other side of the map. Obviously, Sarah can just try to re-establish the whole five base thing. Got a macro hatch going up in the main base now as well. This is being easier to, to be the attacker on high ping. Uh, I think Maru is the one with ping advantage in game one. Unless they suddenly change that, but I highly doubt it. It should be game one. U.S. West, Game 2, U.S. Central. <laughs> but the 1-1 upgrades on the way for Saro as Amaru, his 1-1 upgrades are done. And we are waiting for him to start a plus 2. And the nice thing about Maru is, guys, whenever you wonder he's about to do something that he needs to do, he pretty much does it immediately. Picks off a queen there as well. It's going to float over these two medevacs into the main base. Unloading in the corner of the main. There isn't really any creep there to work with for Sarah. Slings alone I think is going to be a little bit painful. I guess the link numbers are high enough. Maru does snipe a few of the banes before he decides to hop back into the medevac and get out of there. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any of that. I think overall Maru has looked pretty on point. Cyril dropping his infestation pit. It is done. Fires a plus two melee. Wonder if he is willing to fire up that hive immediately or not. The links are going to spot these two medevacs that were full of units. Maru is going to unload pretty far away. There is that hive of Cyril. Right the way as well. A couple well, minor connections there. It just seems like three marines went down. So obviously no biggie. It's a very different game than the previous one. I guess in the end, Serral doesn't really mind it. We know that Jona enjoys basically any game that goes into late game, whether it's ZVZ, ZVP or ZVT. He is confident. Would probably like to avoid the ultra, ultra late game, but it's going to take a long time before we can ever get there. Couple of permanent cloak with the mines in the mix as well. As Saro right now needs to take care of three fires all at once, or even four. I believe there is a tiny red dot on the top side of the map as well. Maru is definitely testing Saro here. So far, Saro is weathering the storm without really any issues. The only real big L he took in this entire game, I would say, was losing that fourth base when he did. Maybe we he would have been able to save that. The creep is all right. It's pretty good not out of control but I think it's uh, good enough that we can work with it for now and just take it from here nice spread on the zerg links two widow mines or three widow mines fired the two of them only got two links Maru does have a big army in the bottom right side it's important that Serol does show a lot of respect to his army and he does he gets a couple of very good Bane connections as a matter of fact by the way is ultra low on HP for a split second I was wondering if the widow mine friendly fire could have taken it out there is another fight they're just not showing us some of these fights. I am obviously not the observer here, guys. Seems like it wasn't ultra impactful. Drilling claws on the way for Maru. Seems to be doubling down on the Widomite's friendly fire. Maru has to be very careful of that. Matter of fact, it has eight units inside of it. Something like one HP. Even a random queen showing up would be somewhat useful here for Saro. As I don't think Saro really minds these trades. Obviously, we are entering the high phase of the game. We got a couple vipers on the way, Adreno Glens, 3 3 upgrades. And if Sarah can just get even trades, he'll take that for uh, the next minute until those big boy upgrades kick in. There are some Widow Mines. Widow Mines fire. Those are big Widow Mine shots on the side of Maro. Sarah does still continue fighting as those Marines just snipe one of the vipers that was relic from the main base. I don't know if Maro just saw that or not, but that was great. In the end. Even though Saro two big Widow Mine shots to the face in the bottom right side, he gets the full cleanup, and all that's left are Medivax. There was a sick snipe on the Viper by Maru. I'm actually surprised that that fight in the bottom right side went as good as it did in the end, because those Widow Mine shots looked pretty scary. There's a whole bunch of banings, a single barrel circling that. These are the little things that's very annoying to deal with. Now Maru needs to send a couple units over there, needs to throw down a scan. As we've got a Widow Mine drop heading towards the natural at this point. Big army as well being active in the center of the map. 
observer decides to focus on the big army fight. It's a lot of links. I don't quite have Adreno yet. It's going to be a very hectic fight with a lot of widow mines and bane links connecting with a bit of everything. In the end, five drones went down, I believe, to the widow mine drop in the natural. I guess it's all acceptable. Love to see some ultras, right? Okay, we have the Hydra then going down instead. Zero does not believe in ultras here. I love some Burrow as well. You can really see the delay, by the way, that a single uh, Burrow Zerkman cost. And now Sarah obviously knows about the timing of those SCVs of the, of the command center trying to land. So he's sending over a whole bunch of links and he's going to get another delay on this becoming a fifth base for Maro. And a planetary fortress at the same time, a couple of nice perhaps Bailing connections in the center of the map. Parasitic Bomb is going to take care of a couple of these medevacs. Maro does have very good positioning on the high ground, but... As long as Saro can deny that fifth base from morphing into a PF, can burrow another circling. <laughs> I'm a bit surprised about the Hydra then, but I guess it's all good shit. Maro does have a crazy high SCV count indeed, 87. That obviously means that he's not going to have all that many battle units. Good bit of my shot there, decent amount of links going down. Saro is 3-3 is about to kick in. Can't really see how far along Maros is, but okay, it's not really trailing. Now shows up on the right side too, so upgrade stay that even. Tiny moment for these links to have a fun time with a couple of these SCVs. Saro definitely did, I think, a great job in delaying this fifth base from going up in the center. Ah, the grand finals is great. Semi-finals, obviously, was a bit one-sided. It was the great Jonas Tatala show. The grand finals so far is pretty awesome. Let us hope for my boys and my team that things turn around. I think it's okay. This is going to be a stressful one. We got the Lurker then going now, but at the same time that Ghost Academy is going up in the back of Maru's main. And a 5 base Maru, guys, on Ancient. It is pretty damn scary. Links and Banes crashing into more bar units over here. Maru was running away for a little bit and decided to focus, I think, on the fight on the right side. Do we have a parasitic bomb there? Yes. Can we take a look at that fight, Mr. Observer? I think pretty decent fights across the board here for Serral. Top left went fine over here. Kept the hatch real life. Took down a couple of the expensive units too. I don't think Serral is upset with how any of that went. If that's not a victory, I don't know if we're ever going to find a victory with these army comps. Kind of sad that Sarah does not have Burrow. I wonder what the Widowman count is. First Ghost is on the production tab, guys. Or maybe it's the second and I missed the first. Personal cloaking being researched as well. Wow, 38 Widow Mines have gone down. Jeez Louise. It's a 15 minute game, guys, and 38 Widow Mines have gone down. And Bailey says Maru is going to lose. I won't hate it. <laughs> Ooh, it seems like we had a couple of very big Widowmine shots there on the right side. I don't think the camera really caught it. But we saw all the dead bodies hit the floor. Sarah still wants to be aggressive. He's maxed out. He's got money in the bank. He's got a lot of units in production though. But he just wants to fight before this is a planetary fortress as well. It feels that these Widowmine connections are pretty damn devastating. As another big Widowmine shot goes off. There aren't too many bio units remaining. Another parasitic bomb goes down inside of the middle of these medevacs. But Maru keeps his command center safe. Maru keeps that soon to be planetary fortress safe. And all the SCVs as well. Supply looks a little bit dramatic for Maru, but he's got a crazy good economy. I mean, so does Serral. They're both rich AF. I don't know how high the ghost count is. We do see nine lurkers. Seismic Spines is done. Adaptive Talons is on the production tab. It's always a pleasure to see these two play a proper game against one another. It hits different. Liberator gonna see each up in the top left side, and that's a bit annoying because I didn't really see any anti air there for Cero. Cero, who really wants to start hitting the economy of Maru at this point, he says, All right, we've done some poking and prodding, but at this point, I mean business and I'm serious. Bane links are gonna run into all the widow mines. They really didn't do a whole lot, but the links and banes and lurkers do blow up the PF. Same time, Maru is gonna try to make it a base for a base. Maru not paying attention there for a split second, losing a few of these bio units. 
Sarah sees it. Nice hot pick up there by Maro. Maybe the Bailings can blow up a couple of the Marines and SCVs. That's 17 SCVs in the end that went down. 17 SCVs and a PF at the same time. We did have a uh, hatchery fall on the top left side. Random Lurker made it to the bottom side. And that's obviously nice. But more economic damage. Maro economically is still alrighty. Like, he's got a crazy good economy. He's had a lot of bases. And he's not maxed out. Does not have money in the bank. So perhaps if Sarah can find one amazing fight in the next minute, he can just close it out immediately. Saro, Maro, if he loses another base, he's going to have a very hard time rebuilding any units. I feel like it's starting to look pretty good for the great Iona Sotala, who is a 30 and 1 in this season of the WTL code S. Probably the best performance anyone has ever had in this team league. As he gets a good engagement over here in the bottom right side. Two blows up a couple of expensive units. Maru is trying to land a few snipes. Will land a few snipes. Squitter mines all over the place. Another power bomb goes down. Seems like Maru does not end up losing any medivacs. Good save in that regard. The ghost count is obviously important and it's going up. Maru is quite, kind of chilling right now on the bottom right side with 9, 10 goals. Still has plenty of bases, producing 2, 3 goals at a time. There's a few banelings go on a very brave mission, hoping to connect with the ghosts. Not that easy. I wouldn't hate an infester here or there, right? Trying to get that magical fungal. I know Zergs do not always believe in it, but I think once the ghost count goes up, it's worth to try. Well, this is a random blinding cloud as well to mess with the units a little bit. As Sarah feels there is an opening at the 9 o'clock, gets on top of this PF. The PF is targeting down the banelings, but it will still fall. Not too many SCVs went down, but... There's one more base that Maru needs to rebuild. I think he's floating over his main. Yeah, Maru says, all right, I don't need a planetary there anymore. He's floating over his main orbital at this point. There is our investor. I was like, Roddy's pulling the pig hype. I was like, I don't understand. I was like, I'm definitely not fake hyping this. Like, this is a tense match. And I'm obviously worried because Bastard definitely needs to get a W here. I was like, oh, we're talking about the investors. And right when I put two and two together, I saw that first investor on production. A yep, couple of goals pretty far forward. An abduct would be sick now on that medevac. I would have loved an abduct. I would have really loved an abduct as more goals hop inside of these medevacs. Oh, Serral, I don't know about this. Feels that Serral just lost a crazy amount of units and didn't really get a whole lot done. He's going to rebuild on 88 links immediately. Splits off one more lurker. Tiny missed opportunity there, guys. I think on an abduct on the medevac that had four ghosts inside of it. It is what it is. Serral does still have a great economy. He can rebuild units. He can take a, a bad trade. He'll survive. Just can't take too many of those in a row, especially not against Maru. Amaru is playing incredibly well so far today. I think that much is obvious. There's a couple of links and base crash into this army. Saru is in a tiny bit of trouble. We have got one investor showing up. Can we land a magical fungal on something that matters? Doesn't quite seem to be the case. Saru is forced to give up on this base now too. Now he has plenty of bases. Also has a little lurker run by on the 9 o'clock base. Just a couple links there would be good enough. Because that's an orbital. It's no longer a PF. 110 army supply against 118. More investors on the way. More bailings on the way. Plus three missile attacks. Somewhat close to finishing up as well. I want to. I would love to see the ghost count. They don't really do a lot of rotating throughout the production tabs. Sharking investor, guys. A sharking investor could eventually, down the line, have a pretty big impact if we can land a nice fungal on all those ghosts. Oh, but the scan goes down and Maru sees it. That's a great scan by Maru. If he does not throw down the scan, maybe Sarah would have been able to land a great fungo. Now that does not happen. And even though Sarah still maxed out, guys, for the first time in a while, Sarah has no more money in the bank. Maru still building four goals at a time. The grand finals with the WTL playoffs. It's starting to look like it perhaps is about Maru. Obviously, Sarah is still in this game, but I think it's going to get harder and harder. As Maru's army just gets better and more ghost heavy with every minute that goes by. One or two goes there in a bit of trouble. Bailings running up the ramp. Don't see any widow mines here. Serral decides against it. Does not want to lose all these banes. Maybe there was a moment. I believe a couple of lurkers are going for the PF in the center. 
If yep. There are some tanks here. That's still nice. Bailings looking for connections with the Ghost. Ghost activate personal cloaking. Bailing still chasing. There is no overseer here, but it is good enough. That looked like an amazing fight for Sarah as Maru's supply all of a sudden plummets. A lot of Marines and Marauders going down. A couple of Ghosts going down as well. Forced to repair multiple planetaries. There are lurkers all over the shop. And obviously this is very difficult as a Terran to deal with. Having to being forced to scan everywhere. Maybe the only proper way to clean this up is with a couple of Ghosts. Right, there are a few with a mind here. The first shot is not that bad. And the second one is not that bad either. I kind of feel like that could have been a disaster. But it's not. And that means Sero is going to get on top of that orbital. That was once upon a time the main base. Maru loses his OG main base. Sero in a pretty good spot all of a sudden. They've got that sharking infester. Looked a little bit dicey when he was forced to give up that base in the bottom right side. Both of them maxed out. Neither of them really having money in the bank. But... Serral just creating a lot of chaos with lurkers all over the shop, picking up some uh, reinforcements. And in the end, just sending it with those banes. With or without an overseer, it did not matter. It was good enough. There is another Widow Mine. That Widow Mine gets a pretty decent shot off, but it could have been worse. Planetary Fortress is going to fall, and it's not just the PF that falls, it's 14 SCVs as well. As Maro was thinking about sending that orbital to the bottom right side, changes his mind, sends it to the center. Shocking infester, guys. There is an infester waiting to unbarrel. Lends a little fungo. It's gonna play it safe and goes for the ghost on the right side. The real ghost jackpot was on the left, but Sarah is not being greedy at this point. He says, nope, I want the guaranteed four ghost. I think with the economy that we are currently working with, I can live with that trade. Yona is close to taking the 1-0 lead here. In the grand finals in his little best of two against Maru. As a few more links run by. A couple of them died to that Widowmine shot. But a few of them still get on top of a tank. One tank dies. Is this army good enough to close it out once and for all? 82 army supply left on the side of Maru. That's obviously not too bad. We see a couple of EMPs. It's a big Widowmine shot on a lot of links. And Maru is definitely in a bit of trouble. And he doesn't have too many Widowmines to run back to. GG gets called. And Zero takes the one. Oh, lead. Over Maru improves to 31 and 1, guys, in this season of the WTL Code S. Now, that's not over yet. We get another Sarah versus Maru. We ain't done yet, guys. We are not done yet. Now, Maru will have his map choice. The only thing he cannot do is pick Neo Humanity because we vetoed Neo Humanity. That should have been US West, and I think game two will be on US Central. But Maru will have the map choice. Naruto says that he's gonna pick Babylon. Yeah, there is a chance. Incredible game. It was good. I love the Rainer against Maru on uh, Ancient as well. They're two very different games, right? Different tempo. It's always nice when you're like 15, 20 minutes in and you're still not quite sure where it's gonna go. And at one point you're feeling confident and then you're feeling less confident and then you feel confident again. A good scrap between two goats. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent certain if Serol gets the ping advantage the next game, but I do believe that's the case. I think game one US West, game two US Central. How big is this twenty? Well, it's the biggest team competition out there. Uh, first place is I think twenty k. This is the, the payout. So we're already guaranteed 15,200. But obviously, it's about the prestige of crowning yourself as the best target of two team out there. And a little over $20,000 for the winning team. So there's also a whole bunch of bonuses. Sarah already got an $1,100 bonus for being the MVP of the regular season. And he could very well pick this one up too. And this one. Sarah <laughs> could grind some awards, guys, if he keeps on winning. Ah, it's been a great season. I am very, uh, just very grateful that the WTL is running this. It really is giving us a lot of awesome content. Some consistent content throughout the week and then some amazing content, especially here in the playoffs. We missed the first two days, but we are here for the absolute final day. It's not Babylon, Mr. Naruto. It's Dragon Skills. Top left side, representing Basilisk. Now 31-1 in this season of the WTL Code S. It's Serral.
in the bottom right side the man who defeated Raynor 2-0 in his previous best of two now down 0-1 but can he tie things up it's onside gaming's Maru so who is the first to get all three MVP of races uh who would get the MVP of Krodos I actually don't know I mean there are some stats that you can take a look at and then you can see who did best I guess Terran, they can definitely give it to Maro. I think Maro's had a pretty amazing season overall. I wouldn't really know who else to give it to. Need a Serral 2 0 because I need Jim. Yeah, but even if Serral 2 0s, like we are far from done, guys. It's gonna be a long night at the office for the boys over in China. But I think that's everything that they hope for. I think everyone hopes for an epic final day of a league that's been going on for many months. Protoss is hero or max packs? I was thinking max packs, but it's kind of sad that they didn't even make it into the playoffs, right? I don't know if you can really give it to max packs when they didn't make it into the playoffs. Thank you, Mr. Uh, JBS, by the way. I'm not sure what you meant with I'm back, apparently, but welcome back. And thank you to Zia Sim as well for the 59. And we'll get everybody else later. It's another Turex Reaper opening on the side of Maru. Saro has a very different setup than what Raynor had in some of those games. We do have relatively quick link speed on the way. Obviously not losing any drones here is the most important thing. A frustrating little dance for the Zerg until the Queen is out. You kind of feel like you're handicapped, but if you make it through the dance without bleeding out any Zerglings or without losing a drone, you're always like, all right, we're off to a good start. Is it already 1 a.m. in China? I guess it's like six hours later, right? Yeah. I mean, they are obviously in charge of it, right? They scheduled all of it. We were supposed to, I think, initially start at 12, then it was 1, and then the first match was obviously very quick. And we had a proper break, like a 45 minute break between the semi-finals and the finals. But I think it's okay. As I said, I think this is everything you hope for as tournament organizer. It's one of the drones does get sniped by the Triple Reaper here of Maru. You can make excuses about the ping or the Terra map pool, but it's also very late in Korea. I'm not making any excuses for anyone. I'm just over here enjoying some StarCraft mate and trying to bring you guys the games and have fun and obviously cheer for my boys. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not making any excuses. Are you going to get equal shares of the team price? I actually have no idea X uh, Poodle Pants. That would honestly be a very big deal for me, but uh, no. I uh, I don't know how that works. I I have never really spoken about it. I'm counting on zero, so anything else is a massive bonus for me. That's how I see it. Because <laughs> obviously, uh, like these boys are good enough to win with or without me. And I've tried to make it easy on them with scheduling, and I've tried to have my input a few times. But obviously, uh, Sarah, Rainer, Trigger, they are the real stars. I'm just an old man who they are bringing along for the ride. <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to go yet. I'll let the boys decide. Ooh. Okay, the game sounds disappeared after a split second, but Sero surrounds a Reaper, and that's obviously nice. I think overall Sero should not be unhappy, right, with this start. Sero dropped the Roach one. We definitely have a different mid-game plan here than in the previous game. Of course, Dragon Skills is a much tighter and more narrow, smaller map than Ancient is. Maybe he was worried about something. I'm not sure if Saro knows exactly what Maru is doing. If he knows all about the triple CC and whatnot, but we'll keep an eye on it. Question, how did Basilisk go 11-0 and zero but end up second? The reason for that is that you get less points for winning in the regular season by an ace match. In the playoffs, obviously, it doesn't matter, right? Winning is winning and you just want to advance. As my stream is lagging, that's not my fault. Hey, it did get very uh, clean right now. Quality improved, I think. Quality looks better all of a sudden, so I'll take that. We have a Widow Mine drop into the main base. Sero needs to make them sure that he turns the drones in the right location. Loses a bit of larva. No, don't attack your own lair. 
I think he's dealing with Widowmines in the natural. The Observer thought it was very funny to see Sarah attack his own lair. Okay, gets that Widowmine. That's obviously big. This Widowmine has not fired yet, so Sarah needs to pull away the unit one more time. Um, but yeah, TLDR, in the regular season, we often won, but we won by an ace match. And if you win by an ace match, you get one less point than if you just win straight up. Bass error, even though Onsite lost twice, they won almost all of their games without an ace match. Well, we went to ace match relatively often, and that's why, even though we were undefeated, we ended up second. I don't know, what's the map score as well, I guess. That too. But the reason why we were tied in points in the first place was because of the ace match thing. If it wasn't for the ace match rule, we would have never been tied up, right? So, so it was because of both. The LDR, we had a good season and we ended up second. It's all good. Let's focus on the playoffs. Maro is going from the high ground back into the low ground, back on the high ground as he's got a whole bunch of barracks going up on his side of the map. Saro cranking out a couple of roaches, playing a single evolution chamber style, plus one carapace is done. Hydra is down on the way as well, and a 7 minute and 5 second hive guys. 7 minute and 5 second hive. Nice concave there for the roaches as they pick up a few of these marines. Obviously, the roaches were in far superior numbers, so it would have been fine anyway, but it looked nice. That's a lot of barracks, guys, and all of them on the low ground. So, Maru now goes up to 8 racks, 3 bases, 60 SCVs, single factory, double eBay. Not sure if we got an armory yet. Maru's upgrades are about to finish up, so for Maru's sake, I hope he has an armory. If we're uh, ultra biased and we're on Team Basilisk, we hope he doesn't have an armory. Unless that's part of the plan, but I'm not too worried about 1-1 one, one forever. Luca says this is a weird build. Well, the build I'm not ultra unfamiliar with. The barracks positioning is a bit all over the shop. Saro does not have a baning nest. He's playing pure Roach Hydra into Lurkus. We've got a little drop in the center of the map. That's why we had a tiny bit of picture in picture there. Three drones in the end went down. It's, this feels very chaotic, right? If you look at that, if you would hide the name tags and you would just see that third, you'd be like, <laughs> who the hell is building all of his barracks there? And then you're like, oh, it's Maru. <laughs> Never mind. It's probably pretty cool. <laughs> Looks very chaotic. I think it's, it's just eight wrecks. Unless I'm mistaken, but I think it just built six barracks all in the third. And then he has the initial two barracks from the beginning of the game. Couple of corrosive balls taking out one of the tanks. Maru's already pushing, moving out. He's got that armory on the way right now. Obviously, it's going to be 1 1 for a long time. The first few Lurk is already being here, by the way, on the side of Yona. That's got to make Yona feel good. Sure, tanks are annoying, but it's just one factory tank production. At this point, it's almost mostly Marines. And Maru is going to try to pull the Muslim here. And that's stimming into a couple of Lurkers. That really never went too well for the Muslim. Let's see how well it goes for Maru. Turns out even for Maru that doesn't go all that well. Good transfuse as well on a couple of these Lurkers. In a way, I even thought that would go worse for Maru than what it ended up going, but that was not a victory for Maru. As he loses another tank there. Saro gets in range with the Ravages. Things are starting to look better and better for the great Aiona Sotala. As he steams into Lurkers one more time. Maybe he gets one of them, but and now we're looking at four or five Lurkers on the production tab. And where game one was awfully scary and very comp competitive, kind of feels that game two i don't want to say it's a walk in the park but it's looking really really good for sarah who's got seven drop lords on the way we'll talk more about that later as we take a look at maru trying to get everything into the main base maru actually looks pretty concerned here for the first time not happy with how any of that went and we all know maru as the absolute god of like turning a dire situation into all right let's just throw her up and defend and that's something you can get away with against almost everyone but can you get away with that against Serral? I kind of highly doubt it. I want to see where those seven drop lords are at, by the way. That's going to be kind of cool. I want to see that invasion of Lurkus. Oh, 
Nice connections there. What is that? Just two lurkers in the end? All right. That's not as cool as I thought it was going to be, guys. But it can still be very good. Make no mistake. Because it can obviously create a lot of chaos. And if there is one thing that Maru does not want to deal with, it's lurkers all over the place. But he barely has any detection anywhere and obviously does not have any ghosts. So that looks a little scarier than what it actually is going to be. Maru, by the way, is so damn good, right? Like, how can he just look so dead and then a minute later he's attacking? And you're like, oh. Is Saru in trouble? I absolutely don't think he's in trouble, but it is impressive that Maru is able to make some magic happen. But this is where Yona can create some chaos. A lurker on the high ground from the main, reaching that mineral line at the triangle. And we've got a lurker deep inside of the main base as well. Ah, the scan goes down, but the lurker actually did not fall. So Saru can always move that lurker back and can be more annoying with it. At this point, Maru is kind of all over the place. He's got a bunch of units in the top right side that are not sure if they want to commit or not. They were there, turned around in the end. They will turn around again. And at least get a cancel on that hatch in the top right side. Cero is only at 68 drones. This is one thing that is kind of important to keep in mind. Where well, earlier I thought this game was kind of over. Cero does need to be a little bit careful. Because that economy is not all that great. But all these lurkers are great. Oh, Maru, Maru derping a little bit there. Going from left to right, back into the mid grinder. Cero keeps that base safe. Center base on the more pressure. A few roaches will save it. Maru in the end goes for that drop that he wanted to do a long time ago. Lurkers already here. Can we hold position those lurkers? Well, they're just going to fire immediately. Doesn't matter. Liberator's left behind. Losing the limbs is bad. And Maru unloads on top of the other lurkers. Cero is literally everywhere he needs to be. It's lurker galore over here on Dragon Skills. And Maru is forced to tap out just like that. It's the great Diona Sotala who ties things up. For Basilisk in the grand finals of the WTL code as a summer season. And improves to 32 and 1. What a man. What a man. Cool. Do we get Serral Solar again? Well, there's a couple things that uh, Onside could do here. Onside could revive Maru immediately. If that's what they would like to do. The next starting map is uh, Altitude. Very unlikely. So, 99% certain this will be solar. <laughs> Hello, Anna. 99 next map, starting map, guys, is altitude. 99% certain this should be solar, right? So, we get a rematch of Game is 8 quarterfinals. Obviously, we had one of the more surprising outcomes. Great win by Yona. It's already confirmed, guys. It is going to be solar versus Cero. Thank you to Kayla for gifting us up to Marine Lord. By the way, Marine Lord, I saw uh, I saw Benny's son play with the tractor that apparently you gifted him. I didn't know you had such a sweet side, mate. You gifted Benny's son a tractor because he helped you to win uh, that uh, Red Bull Battlegrounds tournament. And they were loving it. All the kids were loving it, so you did a great job in that regard, mate. All right, tiny break, guys. After that, I'll be back with Serol versus Solar. See you guys soon. Be right back. <laughs> yeah, Sarah's uh, Sarah's been pretty good for us in the WTR, guys. He's been all right. Who could have thought? You get that guy in your team. Good stuff happens. Is this a rerun? No. I, I never do rerun. I have literally never done a rerun in my, in my entire life. Everything has always been live. If I ever cast Add a game that's not live, it will be in the title and I will tell you guys Outside over and over again. <sighs> Alright, so we're all tied up once more. If you guys joined us a little bit later, I can show you guys quickly how all of this went so far. And if you guys have any questions about what needs to happen here, I'll let you guys know. At this point, we're all tied up here in the Grand Finals. Ryong got a 2-0 over Trigger. Raynor got a 2-0 over Ryong. Maru got a 2-0 over Raynor. Serral got a 2-0 over Maru. And now we are here with Serral versus Solar. Uh, if this is a 1-1, we head into a revive. If it's 2-0, obviously the winner stays and the loser team has to revive. And if it then stays even, eventually down the line, we'll have an ace match. And you cannot revive and have... Uh, an ace match of the same player. So we cannot use Serral three times, for instance. But 
we'll talk more about that later it's time for that rematch guys of that quarterfinals that left a lot to talk about of gamers 8 in the top right side of altitude we are looking at the main base of the man who's still not all the impressed the great Jonas Sutala representing Basilisk in the bottom left side we're looking at the main base of the Korean Zerg who was very cheeky and had a lot of aggressive builds at gamers 8 and he got the job done with a 3-0 in that quarterfinals on-site gaming's solar didn't take us very long to wait for that rematch eh Solar has already built more drones in this game than he did in the entire best of five of Gamers 8. So it's safe to say that we are seriously macroing over here. That's obviously a bit of an exaggeration, but... <laughs> First two games though, it's close guys, it's close. <laughs> yeah. Not many players 3 out Zero. That's definitely true, but Raynor also did it at the Home Story Cup. Yeah. A very, very long time ago, I think Maru got a 3-0 over Cero in the Raven patch, if you guys remember that. Uh, WESG. Back then, the Raven anti-armor missile did like 15 damage on impact. So every late game TVZ was just Terran players maxing out on Ravens and then blowing up the army. <laughs> is this the final game? No. Whatever happens here, it is not the final game. As you guys can see in the top side of the scoreboard, both teams still have two dots left and those represent two lives. Dark also did it uh, yeah, in a TSL, right? TSL Grand Finals or lower bracket. Was it a 4 0? Yeah, that was a very short Grand Finals. It was like a 27 minute best of seven. Yeah, Dark got the 4 0 in, uh, in TSL 7 or 8, something among those lines. So far, these two nerds mirroring each other besides where they expanded. Saro expands in a horizontal manner. Solar has taken his triangle base. Could this be personal preference? When you see Saro on these three bases on LT2 though, you do start thinking back a little bit of that game against Ragnarok. <laughs> Whatever happens, let's fight till the bitter end, okay? <laughs> Here's a question, and did any Protoss ever 3-0 or 4-0 Saro? I know that classic 3 0 Cero once at an IEM Katowice. But that was before Cero was a god. But he was already the best performing non Korean player at that Katowice. But I think classic. Uh, in the, It was in the big arena. So I guess it was the semi final. I think classic got a 3 0. 2017? Question mark. 2018? Maybe 2018, March. Yep, I still remember there, like there was this one tiny map. It was the map where I got my uh, great victory one on my birthday. I forgot the name of it, but Classic basically had that game 100% in the back. And then he just made the worst choices ever. I was kind of sad. That was not a very pretty IM Katowice Grand Final, like many other Rogue Finals. Saro's got a 7 worker lead. Solar is going to try to be aggressive, guys, properly for the first time. But it feels that Saro has a pretty good read on the situation. We are dancing with Lings and Banes. Obviously, online, all of this stuff is stressful for both of the players. I feel like we had a big Bane connection there on the left side. The Observer missed it. I want to... So that... I never really know what that means. That means Saro killed 13 Lings, right? That's what you killed. So I guess Saro had a big Bane connection that we missed. Sarah ends up losing two drones, but obviously that's nothing to worry about when you've got a little economic advantage. Solar has been droning up behind this. Sarah is the one queuing up seven roaches way before Solar's roach one is even done. Well, Sarah is going back into droning, so it kind of feels like it's for safety. Solar is probably going to panic a little bit once he sees these roaches, knowing that his roach one is not even done yet. Does see the lair, a couple of links of uh, Solar making it into the main base. Both players are going to end up losing a few drones here. The real question is, how many does Silva end up losing against these veins? So far, Cero has lost more. Oh my goodness, those links in the main base, guys. Yeah, Yona is shaking his head. He is not happy. That very tiny link run by ended up killing nine drones. And while Cero was in a pretty good spot, it kind of feels like we're in a bit of an awkward one now. 
it's far from game over, but uh, so long as Lair is done and he drops the Spire immediately. Sero does a good job here dealing with those links, does not really lose, but Sero is unhappy. You can see it, don't give up, Yona. There's everything to play for, my friend. Sero beating himself up a little bit for not keeping track of that. Yeah, what felt like was a tiny link run by, but even five or six links, if you ignore it for a while, obviously it can have a pretty big impact. Sero is morphing, I think, an overseer at the bottom side of the map. And that Overseer, guys, is going to be very important, because will he be able to scout that Spire immediately? Yeah, he does indeed see all the Extractors. And, uh, if he wasn't certain yet, he's going to see it now. He sees that that Spire is 65-70% done. He'll drop the Hydra then. What's always very difficult, if you're a Roach Hydra player, is obviously going up to four bases, right? There is... Zero is definitely harsh on himself in this game. He is going to try. And if we ever want to keep this hatchery alive, we're going to have to get a couple of Spore Crawlers very early on. Need to spread the creep a little bit towards that base. Solar is also getting plus one melee. So even though he's got that Roach one does not feel that Solar wants to pull what I would like to call the Rainer, where you make a couple of Mudas and then you show up with a Roach Ravager max out and you can overwhelm your opponent. He feels that Solar wants to go all out on the good old Muda Link Bane. We obviously have a Baneling us. I don't know if we have Baneling Speed. I don't think we do yet. I think that's something Solar probably will work on in the near future. So, if you lose that Overseer, it's going to be very close to being supply blocked. Solar might lose one or two units there by knocking down those rocks the way he's currently doing it. Infestation Pit already done, I believe, on the side of Sero. Sero played uh, a lot more than four non ZVZs. Sero went 7 0 in the semi finals against Abydos, and that obviously uh, included couple ZVPs and also a couple ZVTs. He actually didn't play a single Zerg there because they did not send out Dong Regu. The Hydra's move right when the Muda show up. A little bit unfortunate. Sero loses a few drones. How much anti do we have in the main? It's three queens and a Spore. And a Spore is going to keep at least the mineral line safe. But these Mudas are going to be annoying. Now both of them are kind of all over the place. Sero does find a few of these Roaches off Solar. And Solar has no Roach speed by the way. Right? I mean, I guess he doesn't care because he wants to play Muda Link Bane, but do we have any Bane Links? I believe there is a couple of Links running into that 12 o'clock base. This is a pretty big army, though, that Sero has sent to the other side of the map. And Solar was not expecting that, and now Solar is the one who's shaking his head as he is forced to give up on this base, and he is simply not ready. He is going to need some magical Bane Link connections, but he still doesn't even have Bane Link speed, guys. And trying to fight this with slow Banes, I want to say I think that's almost impossible. Uh, he's going to try. Baning speed still not quite ready. Mudos are just going to go for the Hydras. Is there enough anti-air here? Nice micro, by the way, on these Hydras. In the end, a couple of the Banings do connect. Sarah wins the fight on the ground, but he is running out of anti-air. He's obviously buying a lot of time for himself. How much damage can these Roaches get done? Great job there by Sola, just being as decisive as he was. Sarah is all over the place, though. He's going to get on top of Miltrol and Mineral Lines. It's hard for this many... Uh, Roaches to go down against all these Mudas. Eventually the Mudas will clean it up. The only question is how many drones can Serral take down before he runs out of this uh, little roach pack? Can he get that gold hatchery is close? But so far I actually think it's kind of alright for Solar. As scary and as dicey as that looked for a split second and Solar was obviously fuming. I mean Serral is a 4 base player. Serral has created a 10 worker lead for himself. But it seems that Solar will somewhat stabilize. And obviously the next attack, I mean, it's going to get hard. Hydras are expensive. So are Mudas. Mudas are very expensive, Solar. Somehow finds a Hydra there, doesn't lose anything. It's all about them Banelings from here on out, guys. And I got to say, great defense by Solar in the end. Because he really wasn't ready for it initially. And I thought he was going to be in all sorts of trouble. But the fact that he cleaned it up is good. 
now gonna try to get on top of that fourth hatchery we have a couple of banelings leading the charge how good will these baneling connections be they're not bad they're actually pretty damn good on the side of solar and Sero, is he in trouble once more? The Spore Crawl is not quite ready yet. We're gonna try to grab every single Hydra, every single Queen. It's 106 against 106 supply. There is a little Link counter attack that's actually dealing a lot of damage. Those Links have killed 11 drones. Oh, Solar, are you paying attention to your Mutas? Doesn't seem like he is. Bleeding out a few Mutas. Okay, he's gonna get on top of it in the end. Sero gets the base. Man, these games today. What a grand final of the WTL Code S this has been so far. Basilisk versus Onsite is delivering all across the board and 12 minutes in it's just proper chaos here 17 18 drones have gone down, but of course these roaches are stuck here eventually these roaches are supposed to fall Sarah once more With a kind of a grumpy expression, but I mean, we've done a lot of damage It's three base against three base that muta count is definitely a problem. I wouldn't hate like an extra spore or two Solar with a 20 army supply lead at this point but spore crawlers are the worst enemy of them mutas. Holy smokes, man. What, what a clamor this has been, eh? I don't want to say it's one for the ages, but... I will definitely remember this one for a long time. It's kind of what I said in the beginning of the day. Obviously, I will be biased for my team. I will be cheering for my boys. But I also hope for great StarCraft. And great StarCraft it has absolutely been. Solar is ready to send it. We have an investor, but I don't know if we have energy for Fungal. The Bane Link's getting decent connections. Not the best. Quite a few Hydras surviving. Mirror count is still quite high. But there's still a couple of Hydras left over too. Cero immediately grabs those roaches. Sends them to the other side of the map. Oh, Cero taps out. What? Oh. I mean... Uh... 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 I mean, he's up 17 workers. He's sending a couple of roaches to the other side of the map. He does have a spore crawler or two. Like, did we? I don't know. I'd have to go back a little bit, but. Uh, let me take a final look at that again, guys. This is always where people are going to be very divided. Some people are going to say he's 100% dead. Some people are going to be like, oh, no, he left too early. I would have loved to see him fight a little more. Obviously, upgrades are a problem, by the way, guys. You cannot ignore the upgrades. The upgrades are a problem. It didn't feel like a crazy amount of Mudas. So this is where Serral taps out. Serral is up 10 supply. But has lost pretty much every single Hydra. Like, I can't really see how many Spore Crawlers he has. It's also hard to say how many Mutalisks that is. It's, where are those? Are the Roaches being picked off? I think maybe the Roaches he sent to the other side of the map. If he thinks he's dead, he probably is. Yeah, obviously you're not wrong. I do think it was wrong in Katowice. I, the thing is, like, I don't want to have this discussion ever, right? You just want to see someone be dead. You don't want to talk about how he's kind of dead. There are nine Hydras in production, but then you also have to say, again, they're going to spawn at different locations. They're going to come in from different angles. So, uh, yada, 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 right? I don't know. It just kind of feels like, does it hurt to try? Obviously, upgrades are a problem, and, and maybe this game does end. Maybe in 20 seconds, this game is ultra over. Maybe Sero already moved a couple of the spores. I can't see where the spores are. I think he lost the investors already. What are you questioning the king? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that like, I, I kind of wish... Like, if it immediately sparks a little debate, then I kind of feel like, let's just stay in it, right? Let's stay in the couple extra seconds. Maybe Solar does go afk with the mutas maybe he makes a mistake but it's okay i think saro is pretty close to dying there to be completely honest i think that one was more over than kato yeah yeah i agree with bully maybe not like a hundred thousand percent but probably that sometimes the supply does lie i think this is one of these moments where the supply lights a uh, little yeah, I also can't really see what happened to those roaches that he sent to the other side of the map. Maybe those roaches already got surrounded by well-upgraded Zerglings and a couple of Mutas in the center. And he saw that all those roaches were about to fall, so... I, I do think it was over. I do think it was over. 
That by the way means that Solar wins four maps in a row right now against Cero. That's probably the very first time in his career he's ever done that. Uh, Yona, cheer up, mate. Cheer up. Yona! Mate, you've been a god! Get that hand back on the keyboard, amigo! Cero, the only guy who could ever be hard on himself after being 32 and 2 in a single season. 32 wins, guys, and 2 losses. Like, mate. It's okay, we're human. We can't win them all, you know that. Moving on. <sighs> Moving on. Obviously, guys, we missed the intros because we went over a little bit of those final seconds of altitude, so I apologize about missing the first 20, 30 seconds, but you guys wanted closure. I think in the end, we got closure. Top left side, the great Iona Sutala for Basilisk. In the bottom right side, we're looking at the main base of onside Solar. Who has really just found a, a second life in his career. He's always been great, don't get me wrong, but... It felt that there, there was a time that Solar wasn't even allowed to dream about winning four ZVZs in a row against Cero. He's now done it. The well, last game was a good one too. It was pretty back and forth and definitely felt that uh, at one point Solar was in trouble. When that army of Cero showed up there, he didn't really expect to be attacked. Great crisis management in the end by Solo. Just a great game overall. Slowly says, I think he's a bit too tilted. He left too early. Uh, I don't know. I, c I can't read his mind. So It's okay. It is what it is. Yeah, maybe... Maybe he just looked at the supply in the end himself and he expected Solo to be at 60 plus drones and he's like, 42? <laughs> but I don't know. That we can only speculate there, right? I cannot look into the mind of players. No one really can. Hopefully, we'll be able to have a fun, cheerful interview at the end of all of this. And we can just ask him about it. But now, let's focus on this very important match where Onside once more has taken the lead in this Grand Finals of the WTL Code S. What an epic battle it has been between these two teams. I do think we can uh, safely say that these were the two strongest teams by quite some margin over this entire season. In the regular season that showed, and in the playoffs I think it's really showing. A bit of a link skirmish on the side of Solar, where Saro has now dropped a Roach Warn. I don't know, single little happy Zergling. Let's hope this single Zergling doesn't kill a drone. Saro's gonna get pissed if he loses a drone, no! Yo, no, yo, no. <laughs> no. I wanna give him a hug! Guys, you have channel points, right? Redeem all the hugs right now. Stop it. Stop it. Give my boy some love. Give my boy some spirit. No. It's okay. It's a single drop. It's no biggie. It is no biggie. Seven roaches on the production tab. Last game, Cero made a bunch of roaches, but he immediately went back into droning. And it seems like he's going for a similar approach this time around. Solar, definitely the greedier boy between the two. That's a lot of hugs, by the way. <laughs> this is the grand final, Basica. The very, very last clan war of this season of the WTL Code S. It's been an amazing season. I've said it a few times, but nothing but love to our Chinese organizers. Without the WTL, the scene would really feel a whole lot more hollow. So, thanks to them. Show them some love if you can. All right, with all these hogs, guys, I believe that Saro should be flying. I hope he can feel the virtual love. Save your hogs for when he wins it all. Now he's gonna get some kisses then, mate, whether he wants it or not. <laughs> He gets hugs when he needs them. He gets kisses when he gets the job done. Yeah, it's obviously very important for Solo to pick up on a few things, like two little links running into his main base, because those links could morph into Bane links in the corner of the main. And that can turn a game upside down real quick. Serol's droning a lot. I would kind of like to see our man stop droning at this point, guys. Serol's at 67 drones. ZVZ is often just the game of drones, right? You want to make sure that you have a good economy, but you don't want to get too greedy. Solar is already... No, 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 no. Serol drops the Spire as well. That Spire is not going to come into play. It feels that Jonah's having a bit of a misread. Don't 
If he drones right now, guys, we're in trouble. Please. Roaches, 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 roaches. Yon, okay. He is building roaches. He is building roaches. That gives us a tiny bit of hope. If that was a round of drones right now, we'd be dead. We need roaches. Solar is ready to fully go for it, guys. Roach speed is done. Plus one missile attacks is done. Serral drops the spore crawler. No, we don't need a spore. We definitely don't need another spore. Why is he building a spore? Canceling and building another spore. We don't need spores. We need spines. What's happening? That's a... Oh, no. Yona already shakes his head as he now sees the amount of roaches that Solar has produced and sent to the other side of the map. A single baning is not going to make the difference, and that's a GG, and Solar gets the 2-0 over Cero and puts Onside in an absolutely amazing position to potentially win it all. I'm gonna have to discuss with the boys real quick. Damn. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. We, uh, once more, it's very simple. We need a 2 0 here. The map is. Uh, Dragon Skills. Yeah. We need a 2 0. We have a 2 0. We're all tied up again. If this goes 1 1 or even 0 1, it's over immediately. We need a 2 0. And I can uh, let you guys know at this point. We are sending out Rainer. Rainer needs to get a 2 0 for us. The home story and game is a champ. Needs to get the job done for us here. Let's fucking go, champ. Let's go. Uh, we'll settle this prediction. The last one is 0-1, not 0-2. Because if it's 0-1, it's game over immediately. So this is where the options are. But this right here, guys. This right here. <sighs> Come on, mate. Let's fucking go, champ. Oh, man. I, I need a tiny sec, guys. I'll be right back. I really need a sec. Come on, Rainer. Be right back. Three minutes. All right. Hello, Benary. All right, guys. This is it. Everything comes down to this. Tournament live on the line. Championship point for on site. Championship point for on site. Ever since Basilisk started as a StarCraft 2 team, the Orc formed a StarCraft 2 team, we went 4 0 in Code A. 11-0 in the regular season, and we won our first match in the playoffs today. So we are on a 16-0 run. But we are now facing a championship point. Our clutch boy needs to come in ultra clutch once more. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely a bit nervous. I am feeling it. Come on, matey. Let's fucking go, champ. You got this. So the way that this works, guys, is that if Rainer wins 2-0, we go into another series. They get a revive. And if they revive Maru or whatever, right? Then it depends. If it's 1-1, it goes into a best of one ace match. If it goes 2-0, one way or the other, then obviously the winner of the next series is a champ. But none of that matters. What matters now is what happens here. If Solar wins one map, it is over. And Onsite is the champion of this season of the WTL Code S. Raynor needs to 2-0. And he knows that. One map at a time, exactly. We don't have to worry about next series yet. We worry about this one. Reina needs to do what he has done many times in the past. And that is be ultra clutch. 
And this time around, he needs to do it for us as a team. That will not be a game two, no. Absolutely not. If Solar takes the one lead, it's over immediately. Our ultimate big game player needs to show up once more. Lifeline. Dragon skills, map one. Uh, Raynor and Solar played against each other in Gamers 8 as well. Solar took the 1 0 lead, but Raynor won the series 2 to 1. I believe that uh, those games were played on the B stream. And I think that Raynor was in a bit of trouble in either game 2 or game 3, but he turned it around. I didn't see the games, maybe some of you guys did in the chat. You guys can let me know how that went. Solar took the one elite. That is not allowed to happen today. Here we go. Let's fucking do it. In the top left side of Dragon Skills, our tournament live is on the line. Representing Basilisk, it's the Italian Stallion, Raynor. In the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who got the 2-0 victory over the god tier, Cero. This is on-site gaming's Solar. Solar giving Cero more map losses in a single best of two. Then Sarawat had in 16 clan wars in total. Uh, that just goes to show that Solar did an amazing job for his team. None of that will matter if in the end it still goes our way. Both players going hatch for us. Eyes absolutely on the production tab. All right, guys, let's go. Give me some Basilisk hype, some Basilisk spam emojis. Give me some Ricos and Rondas. Let's go. Let's pop off for this Grand Finals. This so far has been an absolutely amazing Grand Finals. Obviously, I wish that we were in the lead and it wouldn't be this stressful. But as a StarCraft 2 fan, obviously, I have appreciated all of this because this has been one hell of a day. I think it's uh, everything we could dream of as a StarCraft 2 fans. Now I just want to see my boys bring it home. <sighs> 13 12 is valid in pro level. I think it's one of the builds that Solo I used against Saru at the game is 8. A lot of cheesy builds can be very valid, especially when there is some ping involved. But even if there's not ping involved, like we sometimes forget that even the best StarCraft 2 players in the world are human. And builds that they can easily deal with in a stress-free situation. If you're playing for thousands of dollars and if there's a lot of pressure on your shoulders, then obviously mistakes happen. And certain cheesy builds that in theory are not all that good, they can work. Thanks, obviously, to everybody that's been tuning in today. Hopefully, you guys had fun. I've done my best to make it a fun broadcast. I definitely had a good time. And hopefully, we are far from done. Hopefully, this will go on a little while longer. Uh, probably the most stressful ZVZ that I've seen in a very long time, guys. Yes, one dot means our final life. And obviously, the way that WTL works is that it's a best of two format. So if it goes 1-1, one, one, then both teams lose a life. Uh, obviously, we cannot lose a life right now because it would be all over. So we need that 2-0 here. There is nothing else that matters. We need a 2-0. Oh. Uh, I didn't check it, Lino, but... If you tell me that it did, I believe I haven't really followed it. I try not to focus on it too much because then sometimes you can get happy or sad based on the amount of viewers. And I don't, I don't want any of that to have an impact on how my own streams go. We, ah, it's we for me. I mean, I'm wearing the shirt, mate. <laughs> Solar is dropping a baning nest, but also a relatively early roach wine. Rainer's link speed is going to finish up in 7 seconds, so will Solar's link speed. It's very important for Rainer to get a quick eye on that Roach Wine. Because that is definitely a very early Roach Wine, guys. Rainer's morphing a couple of banings in the bottom left side. Solar finds it immediately. He's going to go for it. Rainer's building drones does not have a Roach Wine yet. Rainer needs to scout this Roach Wine. I like these links. If these links can just get in, then we can maybe scout. But Rainer does not go in, guys. The baning like these traits are not an important what is important is that Rainer picks up on the fact that there is a freaking roach one there are six roaches on the production tab and he okay but Rainer is winning the link skirmish pretty decisively uh, this hatchery this is cute and all but it's not about this can Rainer at least see a, a roach 
Bob. Oh my goodness, he still doesn't see it. Can he see it now? Can he see it now? He drops his own Reutschwein. 40 drones against 28. We're gonna need some spines. He's still building. Oh my goodness, he's still building drones, guys. This is the first time that Rainer sees it. He's gonna see these roaches run to the other side of the map. We're gonna try to build as many spines as we can. This is going to be a very, very difficult hold. It's a 30 army supply against 13. There's a couple of links inside of the main base. Rainer could be in some trouble here. Did not see the roach born. Did not see the roaches until it was potentially too late. Rainer is gonna have to pull off an absolutely amazing hold here. He's allowed to lose 10 or even a few more drones, but the spines are not quite done yet. Uh, first spine falls immediately. Second spine is going to fall as well. There are a couple of banelings left. Rainer's got seven roaches on the production tab. A lot of the roaches of Solar are low on HP. The queens of Rainer are falling. Rainer's got his own roaches here. He's got a couple of links showing up. Solar's got links showing up as well. Can Rainer buy enough time for himself? One baneling gets a monstrous connection on all the drones, but one baneling is not enough to kill drones. That's fine. Root it, root it, root it, root it, root it. Root it. Oh, uh, the thing is, so many of the drones are low on HP, so we can't really pull it. Maybe Rainer needs to crank out a few more links to put Roaches in the right position. Rainer's still alive, but definitely in trouble. Oh no, if those Roaches get surrounded, we are in even more trouble. It's fine helping out a tiny bit. It's looking dire, but there are a couple of Banelings finishing up. Can these Banelings finish up in time? Can the Spine keep us alive here? It's looking rough. I think those Roaches needed to stay on the high ground. I love the Roaches of Solar are very low on HP. Solar obviously still down 10 workers, but he's got a lot of battle units left, and Rainer really does feel like he's in all sorts of trouble. Solar is m might be happy with just killing the hatchery here as he's going into drones behind this. And it's three bases against two. Rainer still temporarily has a supply lead. Like, I think if Solar would have built more units, it would have been over already. Now it really comes down to what the Banelings can do. Rainer needs to be super careful with his own Banelings. I don't know if those were like the best Banelings connections ever. Obviously, Rainer does not have a lair either or anything. The Banelings connections there are good. I want to say I think that's good enough to at least survive. But that doesn't change the fact that it's now three bases against two. Yeah, and Rainer chased down a couple of these units off Solar. Rainer fires up the lair, he's gonna drone. Okay. Well, Rainer has immediately rebuilt the hatchery, is definitely behind in this game. Don't forget that the hatchery of Solar in the early game did take a bit of a beating. Rainer is in a little bit of trouble, but I believe he was in trouble in one of the games against Solar as well. The game is 8, he turned that one around. I don't know how much worse that one was than this one. It's looking tough. It's looking dire. The lair is a little bit quicker on the side of Rainer. Obviously, he's got that going for himself. Is down in drones at this point. He's building a few more roaches. What are we aiming for here? As Rainer morphs a couple bailings in the bottom left side. He's still building a lot of roaches, guys. Almost feels that Rainer just wants to send it. And maybe he's hoping that Solar is going to get carried away by Greed. Solar checking for Banelings. Barely misses them. Barely misses them. Two Banelings of Rainer for Basilisk. Not bad. Six drones. Not bad at all. We'll take that. Uh, but now Rainer is going back into droning. There's a Spire on the way on the other side of the map. I mean, army-wise, Rainer is safe for now. We'll have a tiny window where he's got road speed. Solar doesn't. I almost think non-stop roaches. I don't know. That's hard. Supplies are too close for that. So there's also still building a lot of roaches. That spire is obviously going to be an issue. Don't forget that Raynor has lost a lot of queens in the beginning of the game. Overseer of Solar gets a good scout into the main base of Raynor. Rainer sees Solar going up to four bases. This Overseer is low on HP, so it's hard to send it in. Rainer sending some of his roaches to the other side of the map. Solar snap cancels it. Does not want to bother. There's a lot of uh, supplies still in production. Rainer's going to try to test the water. See, I don't know if we quite have the overwhelming numbers to really take a fight. Maybe just wants to snipe a unit or two, but gets a Ravager. But Rainer can't really stick around here forever. 
You simply don't have the number advantage. There's a lot of units still streaming to the bottom side of the map, but the first Munas are on the production tab. And I have the feeling that Rainer still does not know, guys. Rainer sees Roaches, sees Ravagers, but he's about to see Mudas. Okay, that's a very late cancel. Rainer thinks about a tiny run by, but... The lack of anti-air is going to be very concerning. Rainer has not seen this Spire yet. He's going to see it soon. He's got some overlords. We need to drop Spore Crawlers immediately. I'm looking for a reaction. Hydra then goes down, couple spores go down. Solar is not wasting any time with overlords on the, the center of the map. Obviously, this is going to be very difficult for Rainer. This is going to be very, very, very tricky for the Italian Stallion. Now down 27 army supply. Sending his roaches out for a split second, maybe faking an attack. Like defending four bases, I think is impossible. Defending three bases, maybe. Sport crawler gets cancelled, immediately gets rebuilt. Rainer mean, did let the hatchery finish up. Obviously, if this hatch falls, that's a problem. But if it can buy some time, maybe it's somewhat acceptable. Losing those overlords is a bit painful. Double spore in the main. He's decent against this many uh, Muras. Solar, unlike that other game where he would double down on Mutalis, this time around it's a couple Mutas into a lot of Roaches, into a lot of Ravages, and Rainer is going to have to pull off the hold of a lifetime. His Ravages could be a little bit late. If Solar just bomb rushes down this ramp, Rainer is obviously going to be in trouble because he's not quite ready yet. These Ravages need to buy some time. Can we spam Krosa Oh my goodness, it's so painful. Now a couple of the Ravages are going to be very exposed as well. Sport Crawler is soaking up some shots. But it's also important that it stays alive. It feels that Solar may just have a little bit too much here. Rainer is microing as well as he can. But it seems that the MVP of today is going to be on-site gaming Solar. As he takes his hand off the keyboard, he's dancing. He knows that he got the job done. Unfortunately for us, our winning streak ends here. GG gets called. Congratulations to Solar. Congratulations to on-site gaming who crowned themselves champion of this season of the WTL Code S. They get the job done. Solar is wondering where the pop of his, of his boys. All right, Maru is smiling. He's starting to believe. GG's, guys. GG's, congratulations to Onside Gaming as they crowned themselves champion. I'm obviously a little sad. It is what it is. We have had an amazing run, I think an amazing season. And uh, you can't win them all. Maru played very well today. Ryong did his job against Trigger. And obviously, Solar in the end brings it home with three amazing CVCs on his side. We gotta give credit where credit is due. Congrats to those boys. Oh, yeah. My StarCraft heart is happy because I think we had an amazing day of games. We had an amazing grand finals. My biased heart is sad for my boys and my team. But yeah, that's competition, right? It wouldn't be fun if you can always win, if you already know you're going to win. We, uh, I think we had an amazing first season. We started in the beginning of Code A, went undefeated until the absolute last match of the season in the playoffs. In the end, Onsite proved to be the better team today. That's sad, but it's competition, right? It is what it is. I think the boys played their heart out. Uh, I'm proud of all of them. I think they all played an amazing season, obviously, especially Yona. In the end, what was it? 33 and 3, whatever he ended, 32 and 3. It's an absolutely uh, amazing run by him. 32 and 3 is what he ends up on. And yeah, GG's. Congrats to Onside once more. Especially Solar, I mean, that boy really is on a run. Had a good performance at Game is 8. And today he is the hero. I see 2 0 Saro, and he gets the job done against Rainer with the 1 0. Next season is for Basilisk, the first season without DPG in the finals. We're gonna do our best. Uh, we're obviously looking forward to the next challenge we have as a team.